ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start. Uh, this is the um, community engagement meeting. Uh, and I'm going to ask everybody, we do this at City Council and School Committee, uh, and we're going to do this going forward for the community engagement. If we could please all rise and salute our American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so excited about tonight. This is a great turnout. Um, if any of you uh, uh, can turn back time to the campaign, um, during my mayoral campaign, I had pledged to do not hire cops, not hire fire, not hire teachers on my first endeavor. My first endeavor would to be do this, come together as a community and uh, have a community engagement meeting. Uh, I'm so proud to have my, my friends and colleagues up here, Superintendent Mike Thomas, My Brockton High 1988 classmate, Ward 7, and Council President, Shirley Azak. And the Ward 3 and Vice Chair, School Committee member, Mark D'Agostino. I'm also proudly joined by a lot of department heads here from City Hall, from Fire Police. If you could all, ladies and gentlemen, and other department heads, if you could please stand and be recognized. I want to thank each and every one of you for your, uh, your service and commitment to our community. I do want to take the time to recognize other elected officials, and I thank them for being here tonight. Uh, Councilor at Large, Wynn Fowles here, Councilor. We have Ed Miller on behalf of Senator Michael Brady. Ed, thank you for being here as well on behalf of the Senator. Councilor from Ward 5, Jeff Thompson, thanks for being here, Jeff. School committee woman from uh, uh, Joyce Azak's here as well. I always get confused, there's more than one Azak. <laughs> Councilwoman from Ward 4, Susan DeCastro is here. Thank you for being here, Councilor. Again, Council President Shirley Azak. Uh, the newest school committee member, Tony Rodriguez. Tony, thank you for being here tonight. <laughs> Councilor Lodge, uh, Rita Mendez, thank you for being here tonight as well, Councilor. And in the back is uh, State Representative Jerry Cassidy. Thank you for being here, Representative. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank each and every one of you for taking time out of your busy lives to come here. And this is what it means to come together as one. Uh, sharing ideas, suggestions, best practices, and even criticisms. That's the only way the city of Brockton is going to move forward in a positive, beneficial direction. I do want to thank uh, both Judy Sullivan and Tim Sullivan for the school committee for being here as well. Thank you for coming here tonight. So I pr I'm so proud as of January 6th to be the 50th mayor of the city of Brockton, uh, the city where I was born and raised. My wife, Maria Louise, was born and raised where we're raising our three children. But each and every one of you, either you were born here, or you reside here, or you have a business here, you care about Brockton. And Brockton is really in, in all of us. And you know, we need to do it, in a, I think, in a better way collectively. You know, market Brockton. We always hear about the negative things on the news, but we're standing in one of the best public high schools, not just in the Commonwealth, but in the nation. And I want to thank all the teachers that teach, not just here at Brockton High, but all the public schools, the Catholic schools, the charter schools, Southeastern Regional Vocational. 65% of the student population are from the city of Brockton. I want to take the time. It's a tough job. You know, one of my mantras uh, since January 6th, uh, and the, the department heads can attest to this, is listen, we can do better, but we can only do better together. We always have to remember we're in the people business. And when that person picks up the phone and calls the mayor's office or building department or DPW or drives to City Hall, that person's issue is the most important thing. And we need to treat it that way. We need to treat it with courtesy and professionalism. And I want to publicly thank the men and women that serve us for our safety perceptions. The police that put their lives on the line and chase down people that have firearms. The brave men and women at the fire department that run into burning house fires. The brave men and women that work for DPW that when it's negative five degrees, they're out there digging a ditch to fix a leaky pipe. I mean, that's what public service is about. And I've said this time and time again since January 6th. The only way Brockton is going to move forward 
is to realize all the different skill sets and wonderful people that make up the city of Brockton. It's a diverse, wonderful, cultured city, and we need to embrace that wholeheartedly and understand that people are just looking for a great place to live and raise their family, but they need a safe community, and I, and I pledge to make that happen. We need a clean community, and the people at the DPW and, and, and uh, Board of Health understand what my mantra is, Code enforcement, if it's on the books, it's gonna be respected and honored. And we need to make sure that it happens and it has to happen effectively and immediately. We also have to understand that we want an economic thriving community. And one thing that I'm proud to say is last week I went on a conference to Washington, D.C. And some people said, why are you going down to D.C., Bob? And I said, the question is, why am I not going to D.C.? because the best practices learned by the seven Massachusetts mayor that I was down there for three days and the 400 mayors from the, throughout the nation, I came back with so much information that's gonna help each and every one of you and help me be a leader. Um, you know, one of, one of my biggest things is to say, I don't have a staff, I don't have people working for me, we're a team. And I wanna recognize my team. If you work in my office, please, please stand up and recognize, please. Thank you. I just want to share a couple things, and then really the just tonight is to hear from the taxpayers, the residents, the constituents, and, uh, and everybody up on stage is ready, willing, and able to answer those questions. But just to let you know, some of the things that I've done since I was uh, elected and sworn in is I've had meetings at the State House with Lieutenant Governor Polito, uh, the House Speaker, uh, Robert DeLeo. On Thursday, thanks to Senator Mike Brady, I have a sit-down private meeting with uh, the Senate President, Karen Spilka. Um, you know, I've had in-depth conversations with Boston Mayor Marty Walsh, uh, with Tom McGee, the mayor in Lynn, John Mitchell down in New Bedford, Brian Arrigo in Revere, Carlos DeMaria in Everett. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. And at the end of the day, uh, I'm proud to say that Brockton is poised for greatness. It really is. We are poised for great, great success, but we can only do it together. And people say, ah, that's not gonna, that's not gonna happen, Bob. I don't care if I may have two years or 20 years, it's gonna happen on my watch because it needs to happen. It's too important that it doesn't. You know, if, if we fail now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the next generation that's really gonna be punished by that. So I just wanna first of all say thank you because you don't have to be here tonight. So you care about the community we call home. And as do all my friends here up here, you know, we're public servants for a reason, a great sacrifice of time away from our young families. Um, but why I wanted to do this and why I thought it was vitally important is to be able to learn from each other, to embrace different ideas and opinions, and build successful bridges, to make sure that, listen, things have been done in the past that we can recognize, errors, you know, misnomers, uh, discriminatory practices, and we need to learn from those to better the community. And we will, we will, without question. But again, tonight, I, again, I, I thought the council president, vice chair school committee, and of course the new superintendent of the schools, Mike Thomas, should be up on stage because we're all in this together. There's no city council, school committee, mayor. We're duly elected the same way. We all care about the community. And that's why I thought it'd be the only right thing is to have them sit on stage with me, uh, the mayor of Brockton. So again, really what we're doing tonight is we, we open mics. This is being filmed. Um, any questions, please come up to the mic. Uh, and again, nothing's off limits. If we don't have the answer immediately, we're gonna get into the answer and we'll do our due diligence and get back to you. All the department's uh, heads uh, were, were more than willing to come here tonight and I thank each and every one of them. So with that being said, the floor is yours. Any questions, please come up. It is being filled by Brockton Community Access. Who wants to be the first one? Jay Dimbling, please, come on up. Bob. Hi, Jay. How are you? Good. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Um, as I drive down, as I get to Pleasant and West every morning or every afternoon, I look to my right and I look to my left and I see people texting. If you drive on Reynolds Highway and you look to your right, you see people texting. As you get on 24, people are texting. I know it's not a law yet, but it's going to be a law. How are you going to address, how are you going to stop all these people from texting before they kill someone? 
I mean, it's a, it's a fair question. I mean, growing up in Brockton, we didn't, that was way before social media. It didn't happen. We didn't have to worry about that. We were more you didn't have a phone back then. Uh, I, I'm lucky I have one now. Um, what I will say is I, too, recognize that. Um, and people are losing their lives every day because of texting, you know, especially younger people. Um, we'll never be able to 100% cure that. But I know the proud men and women in blue up there in the back uh, are going to be working diligently. We also have a great partnership with the state police as well. I have a meeting on Friday with uh, DA Tim Cruz at 8.30 and former judge and his assistant, Rick Savignano. Um, we're going to talk about a plethora of issues that impact the community we call Brockton. Um, I don't have a, a, a cure for that, Jay. All I know is we're going to be working with Mike to educate the young uh, here in Brockton, the public schools. I had a tour last week at Cardinal Spellman. I'll be meeting with that principal. Um, and really, it's, it's all of us working together. You know, I have younger kids. They don't drive yet. Um, but my wife, Maria, and I are, are of course, going to be um, stating, much like my parents did to me uh, when, when I was young, about the dangers of drinking and driving. Now it's not just the dangers of drinking and driving, but it's texting. I, I think when you look at statistics in Massachusetts right now, there's a lot of people uh, passing away um, really, it could be avoided, and it's simply because they're taking the time to text and drive, which is going to be a violation of the law. So, Jay, I mean, it's something we need to look at. I don't know, Mike, if you want to address it, how it's being uh, discussed in the public school systems or, or, or Mark. I, I have one more question before uh, that goes with traffic. Sure. Radar. Radar. Radon? Radar. Oh, radar. -A radar. I thought you were talking about the gas, radon. I couldn't hear you. No. It, 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 people speed every place, you know? West Street is like, I've seen them go over the yellow line to get around someone. Yeah, we have a traffic division here. Uh, and one thing that I've said, and I'm going to say do it anything? again. Well, this is what I'm going to say, Jay. Um, we have an acting chief right now, Steve Williamson. Um, the current chief is out um, on, on medical leave and looks like he'll be retiring at some point. Um, all I know is, in terms of traffic, and I live right off of Rockland Street, and they fly up Rockland Street as well. It's a cut through. Um, can we do a better job on traffic enforcement? Yes. Do we have tra traffic enforcement, uh, police men and women on the streets? Absolutely. Where we do. is the chief? Is the chief here tonight? I don't know if the acting chief is here tonight, but I do know that. You know, he wasn't at the inauguration either. At your inauguration. I don't know about that, Jay. But you were there. That's all I that was. matters, Jay. <laughs> again, um, texting and traffic are definitely important uh, issues that, again, need to be addressed as life-saving mechanisms. Also, quality of life issues. Um, I, can talk, I can talk to superintendent of the schools relative to the texting and, and Mr. D'Agostino, and on the traffic, I'll relay that back. Tomorrow morning, ladies and gentlemen, every Wednesday at 9, we have a department heads meeting at City Hall. Every department head meeting meets with me, and that's something that we'll definitely talk about tomorrow as well, traffic could you, enforcement. Could you talk about one more thing? Absolutely, Jay. Code enforcement. Yep. Getting the junk cars off of the streets. So I, uh, I spoke today at the Cape Cod Campello, Montel Campello Business Association, and one thing I said, and there were people there that had supported me on the campaign and supported my opponent, uh, and that's okay, that's fine. Um, but now is now. I mean, the elections are over, and we need to come together as one, right? And one thing I said is, and I've said it earlier, I'm a lawyer, right? And if something's on the books, it's on the books. It's the law, it's a regulation, it's an ordinance. You don't deter from that. So if someone's violating a code, it violates a code, and we need to address it because, again, you're paying taxes, I'm paying taxes. I don't want people calling my friends on the city council or school committee complaining about um, Sunday uh, activities being done on an unlicensed uh, location for auto repair doing spraying. It's quality of life issues. People shouldn't have to deal with that. And so, again, stuff that we've talked about at our Wednesday meetings, um, do we have a magic wand to cure at day one? No. But, again, I'll say it again, as long as I'm mayor, that is on my radar screen, and we're going to address it. Again, there's no look in the blind eye at one person and another person, no, no, no. If you violate an ordinance or code, you violate it, and it needs to be addressed. OK. Mike, do you have anything relative to texting and driving education? We have it in our driver's ed program. In the driver's ed program? But we do have to do it. We've got to have to do a better campaign all across the city. Our students OK. And we will. We will. Let me just, ladies and gentlemen, let me just tell you uh, something, and this is to Mike Thomas's credit. So I coach basketball, seventh grade, Brockton Community Schools. I'm probably one of the worst basketball coaches out there. Kevin Borges, you can attest to that. But I do it to try to make uh, the boys and girls that play on my team better. 
We practiced Friday nights at West Middle School, 7.30 to 8.30. Three weeks ago, I had one of my players collapse. I thought he went into full cardiac arrest. Scary, scary thing, right? My players were like professional, you know? They got over the side, they knelt down. I went over to him, labored breathing, eyes rolled back. Um, thank God he wasn't having a heart attack. Called 911, the police were there, fire was there, they transported him, he was overnight. Well, what it dawned on me at West Middle School is there's no AED, okay, in the gym. Now, at Brockton High School, there is. Somebody collapses here at Brockton High, they can be worked on if it's a cardiac incident. But at West, wasn't there. There's one at the principal's office. My player would have expired by the time I tried to get to the principal's office. Probably wouldn't have been able to get in. Door was locked, you know? I called Mike that night when I was driving back. The next day, Mike called me and said, every gym of every public school is going to have that. That's the type of person Mike Thomas is, you know? Thank God. You know, no, seriously, that's going to save lives. Thank God I didn't need to use that, and hopefully we never will. Uh, but they're going to be there. So those are the things, right? It's learning lessons. And it was a lesson that I learned, scared the hell out of me, but thankfully we didn't need it. But if there's another boy and girl that ever goes down, we're going to have that there. And that's a tool in the toolbox we need. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for being here. So um, are you going to increase the number of um, diversity, diverse teachers in public schools in Brockton? Absolutely. And I'll tell you how. Go ahead. Do you have more questions? So what kind of teachers? Uh, language teachers or science, math or anything? So um, one thing that, so my dad was a teacher up here for almost 35 years in the red social studies. And what my dad told me in 1970, Brockton public schools would attract um, African American teachers by recruiting at Morehouse and Howard university, predominant African-American schools. And then for whatever reason, that, that went to the wayside. During the campaign, um, what amazed me is that the French language is not taught in the Brockton Public Schools anymore. I went to the French ambassador's residence with Marty Walsh and some of the other mayors just, just last week. And there's a woman that works for Keolis based in Boston. Her name's Anna Miller. She's a French nationalist, and she was saying, I mean, she knew about Brockton, she knew about the shoe factories, she knew about the wonderful Haitian population, she also knew that French isn't taught anymore. But there's a grand opportunity through the ambassador's consulate in Boston to help us here in Brockton. Now, that's just one little thing, but it's the little things that are going to add up. And Mike and I, Mike, I don't know if you want to come up to the microphone, but um, we need to attract many more teachers, okay, that reflect our student population. But also, we have to bear in mind that if you're a student graduating from Bridgewater State or Fitchburg State with an education degree and you have student loans, chances are you're not going to work in Brockton because the pay scale is less than Boston and Quincy and Braintree. So we need to try to figure that out, but we owe it to the young boys and girls, first of all, to make sure that we get quality teachers. My sister's a teacher at the Brookfield. I think it's a great educational. But Mike and I have had many conversations. As mayor, I also chair the school committee. So with that being said, Superintendent. Thank you for asking that question. Um, a couple things. Uh, the new Student Opportunity Act was just passed. Um, I want to thank our local legislation, uh, Jerry Cassidy, Michelle Dubois, Mike Brady, um, and, and also Claire Cronin, obviously. Um, I'll give them a round of applause. And, how much time and effort they sent. So this redid the uh, current Chapter 70 formula. So I'm happy to announce tonight that you have seen the last of the layoffs anytime soon in the Brockton Public Schools. So with that being said, unfortunately, as the school committee to, can attest, that we have laid off teachers every year. Um, this last year we did not, but we weren't able to hire that many. But for the last eight years, we've been laying teachers off. So it's almost been impossible to kind of recruit people to come to work in the Brockton Public Schools because every year we've been laying them off. So any new teachers we would get, we would then lay off. So now we can actually do a budget where we can start going out recruiting teachers again in March, in April, in May, instead of trying to hire people when, you know, sometimes we'd get like 10 positions open, but it wouldn't be until August and then you're trying to hire a teacher in August, and those teachers have already been hired by Boston or other schools. We also just received a grant this past fall from the Department of Education um, for 300000 to actually build diversity in our school system. That's helping uh, teachers and who want to be teachers who are of color to make sure that they get tuition reimbursement, help with the MTEL exams, 
I meet with over 60 paraprofessionals and MTAs that currently work in our school system, all people of color, and I am working with them. I meet with them monthly to help them get certified. So we have programs. I have tutoring taking place here at Brockton High at night to work with those individuals to help them get their certification, and as soon as they're certified, they'll be hired from paras or MTAs to be teachers. So I'm glad you asked that question because it's one of my top goals, and now that we actually have money to spend and hire people, it's going to make a huge difference. So, and again, it's very important, and the studies and the research show that, you know, students do a lot better in school when they have somebody teaching that looks like they do. And, you know, there's no disputing that. Thank you. Hi, Lynn. Good evening. How are you? Good. Thanks for being Good. here. One of the things that frustrates me sometimes is that I always seem to be defending Brockton. You know, we're a half a billion dollar corporation, and many cities of our size have an economic development corporation. They have a sales force that goes out and promotes the city and sells the city and does marketing brochures and really works to get development deals in. And they work with developers to help out with funds, for example, for arts and culture. Boston had a percentage of development deal for outdoor art. So I wonder if you could talk a little bit about your plans to really sell the city. The Brockton Public Schools does a great job in selling their excellence, and I wondered what your approach is going to be to try to tell a good story about Brockton. Yeah, no, that's great. So I, too, uh, concur with you. I mean, Brockton's a business, $440 million business known as the city of Brockton. Got to treat it that way, where it's a people business uh, with services. But as I said in the past, when you see Brockton on TV, it tends to be the negative things, right? Something bad that's happened. Um, we need to sell it and market it, just like you said. Um, we can steal best practices from Boston or, or even Haverhill or Fitchburg. Um, you know, Brockton uh, is poised for greatness. And what I mean is we're seeing young professionals move to Brockton because the price point of rent here is so much cheaper than Southie, Dorchester, Quincy, Braintree. So they're coming here. 35 minutes on three commuter stops here, Campello, Montello, and downtown to get into South Station. Right? It's a no-brainer. My chief of staff, Kerry Richards. Kerry, where are you? Where are you? You're in the back. So Kerry grew up in Pembroke. Okay? She went to Villanova. She has a law degree from Harvard University. She's a fellow from the Harvard Kennedy School. Um, she worked at the Mass State House. She just left City Hall in Boston. She lived in Beacon Hill. Right? So she wanted to work here. And I said, you got to move here. She moved here before I became mayor. Beacon Hill to Brockton. Brockton is a great place. Can we do it, Lynn? We could do it with something like you. You work your tail off, and we need to get everybody. I had a meeting with David Farrell today. Everybody knows David, and we thank him for his service. He's a veteran service. I said, what I want to do, Mr. Farrell, is I want to have a Brockton Veterans Museum, okay? Because right now, if you go on the second floor of the War Memorial where the Post Legion, uh, American Legion, Post 35 is, hasn't been used in years, and it's got memorabilia and history. We need, to, we need to really refresh that. But the only way we can do it, Lynn, is to come up with a business plan. And you're from the banking industry, so you understand this. You come up with your mission plan, you come up with your statement, you come up with your business practices, you take ideas from different municipalities, but then you do the outreach, reach to the clergy here in Brockton, existing businesses here in Brockton, City Hall, the schools, the Boys and Girls Club, the YMCA, uh, the Charity Guild. I mean, you got to do that. It's the only way we can come forward. Now, the budget that I'm working on right now is, is the late Mayor Bill Carpenter's budget and, and Mayor Rodriguez's budget. Um, my budget, my administration's budget, will come into effect on July 1. I'm working right now with uh, Troy Clarkson, and the CFO for the City of Brockton, to come up with my, my money in terms of budgeting, and hopefully my, my friends in former colleagues on the city council will, will agree with it. One component of that is to come up with a marketing uh, dollar. We need to come up with some hard dollars to sell Brockton. Our story is so great, and we all know that's why we're here. But outside of Route 24, right, on the North Shore, the Berkshires, they don't know Brockton. They know Brockton from 1950 when Rocky Marciano was a heavyweight champion, or Marvin Hagler was middleweight champion. They don't know Brockton. The boys and girls that graduate from here that go to Harvard and Yale and Princeton and Dartmouth, or the ones that go into the service and risk their lives, 
We need to sell the story, and we will sell the story, but I'm going to be working with people like yourself, Lynn, to do it. I mean, I know you and I are setting up Black History Month on February 3. You're coming. Anybody want to help out? Come to City Hall on February 3rd. We've got a lot of work to do, so please, please. But again, if anybody has any ideas that they think will help us, like Joanne Zygmunt's here. Jo you know, Joanne has given me information from what, what works best practices in England, in London. I mean, we need to steal some of these ideas. Why reinvent the wheel? So again, the only way that I, in my humble opinion, we can take it to the next level is to listen to people's ideas and suggestions. Some of them we can make, you know, day one. Some are going to take steps out, but they're going to cost dollars. You know what else is going to cost dollars? The money that we need to spend to get the Shaw Center back up and running. And I'm happy to talk about the Shaw Center, and I really want to talk about the Shaw Center. I just had a little party that my wife Maria planned at an all-go party. We had 652 people, 652 show up at Lombardo's. Now, there's no venue in Brockton that could hold 652 people. But with that being said, the Shaw Center is an asset owned by the city of Brockton, all of us, taxpayers. The projection right now, and Mr. Clarkson, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's three to four million to get that back up to speed. Could even be five million. We can finger point all we want. People fell asleep at the wheel, city council, whatever. B21, we could do whatever. But what I will tell you this is, right now is the time to come together as one with all the elected officials, figure out what the municipal bond is gonna be. Best time to borrow money for municipalities now with the interest rates. Figure out what the investment is so we can get that place up to a show place so that, you know, the charity guild doesn't have to go to Lombardo's. NAACP doesn't have to go to Lantana. They can do it here in Brockton. So, um, you know, I know I got bashed in the local newspaper about going outside of Brockton. Couldn't have my Brocktonian supporters or friends go to that place. It's not a healthy environment. So, as the mayor, when I came in, I'm not renting that place out right now. I talked to Mike Thomas. I said, Mike, you can't have training in there anymore. Talk to Chris Cooney from the chamber. Chris, you can't use that anymore. Now, I am honoring Mayor Rodriguez, who had rented it out until March 28th. So there's three more endeavors, three more um, events going on there. I've worked with the fire chief, uh, Mike Williams, um, to make sure that we're going to have fire watches. We hired an independent contractor to go in and look at that. And then last week, ladies and gentlemen, we did four different analyses. We did the fire suppression analysis in the kitchen, the sprinkler system, the actual physical fire extinguishers. They were two years expired. We needed to correct those. And more importantly, the water is coming in from the roof and has had a detrimental impact on the electrical box for the fire alarm. So, Chief, and thank you for what you do, Chief said to me, we can't rent this out until we can fix this. We fixed it, and I am gonna honor Mayor Rodriguez's request. But rest assured, March 28th will be the last event there. Since January 6th, when I took office, I said no to people that called about it because we have to close it down for public safety, spend the money, be proud of that place, and after we work with the council and after we work with the CFO, that place is going to be a show place. So again, we can think upon all we want, but the truth is it's in bad shape. We need to get it back up and running, and we will. And Councilor Cruz is here. Thank you for being here. Ward 1, Tim Cruz. Steve Kelly. I have a question about zoning in this city. Yes, sir. There's a large a number of undersized lots. And in other, other areas, if an owner has contiguous properties, they merge them together to make them a standard size. You know, we've got a circumstance coming up that we have an owner that has three lots nearby. And he wants to build two oversized houses on undersized lots. In other parts of the state, they'd merge them to give oh. They merge them, sorry about that. They merge them together to make them one lot. Why can't we follow the rule in this, you know, across the state? We're under, you know, the, under the state law, it's recognized by land courts. Instead of having these people overcrowd a neighborhood. Yeah, it's a great question, Steve. So I am a lawyer, and it's called the doctrine of merger in a yes. mass general law. Um, what I will say, if anybody in here or your family, your friends have any interest in volunteering, send resumes because we need to fill some boards here in the city of Brock in terms of expired. Um, so interested. zoning is, is zoning would be one that we need to consider. What I will say is under Mass General Law, an applicant that owns parcel land can apply uh, for a variance if there is a recognized hardship. Yes. Um, again, I, I can only say, I can't talk to specifics. All I can tell you is um, anybody that owns land lawfully and doesn't have a municipal lien on it can apply. 
If there's a hardship, the members of the, the board can decide. Has to be due to topography, shape yep, of the lot, absolutely. That's or the soil standards. Conditions. Unfortunately, the boards made decisions that ignored that in the past. Yeah, that's got to start changing. And I think the change starts by any mayor that gets in there, man or female, um, that again publicly asks. I'm pleading for people to get involved in our community with different boards. Um, changes are coming, Steve. I can't change past things. Um, all I can say is I served two years on the planning board on a mayor units, volunteer planning board. I made a lot of decisions that people didn't like, but I could look myself in the, in the mirror the next day because I, I felt good about my decision. And I know the people, the men and women that will volunteer under my administration will do the same thing. Good. One thing I've said to anybody I've interviewed is the way that I'm governing is this. I have ethics and moral compass I follow it every day. I want skilled professional people that have a shared vision for better Brockton. Those are the people that I want to surround myself. Those are the people that I am recognizing. Those are the people that want to see a better Brockton. And I know you're one of them. I have one other question. Yes, sir. The traffic intersection, I'm sure you're aware of it, over Pearl and Belmont Street yes. and Stonehill. Every day I come out there, I have to look and be careful that I don't get hit by someone squeezing through on the, making a right turn on red when there is none going. They want to go down to Belmont. You know, I know there was this traffic safety study done by Oak Colony Planning Council. Where does that stand in being redone? So I know that very well because my campaign headquarters was right next to uh, Bertucci. So a lot of you drove through that and you put your life on the line, right? But also you could talk about, uh, we call it uh, Suicide Alley on the other side, uh, on, on Western, Western, uh, Western and Pleasant as well. I mean, the, the lights. What I will say is there's a resident from Ward 3 here, Kelly Hanlon, and she had petitioned this as well. Um, I know State Representative Claire Cronin has looked into that. Um, the mayor, me now, uh, can work with our state delegation. Brockton's very fortunate to have three reps and a senator. Um, yeah, it's, it's crazy. The way that the state can figure that, if you're coming down, okay, on Pearl Street, and you need to take a left to get right. to 24, you got oncoming traffic. There isn't, a, and there isn't an arrow. Um, I don't have that an answer for you, Steve. That was one of the plans that was done with the Old Colony Planning Council. Yeah, I can Is check with Mary Waldron. Mary's the new executive director, OCPC. I got a copy of the plan I can share with you. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Good evening. How are you? Hi, I'm Richard Wind, and uh, I grew up in Brockton. Okay. Um, back when the city of champions didn't just mean Rocky Marciano. It didn't just mean the fact that we had winning football teams. It, you know, it was also the spirit of the city and the fact that people helped each other. And that, you know, when I was a kid, you could walk by, we're in a different world today, okay? And I recognize that. But, you know, you could walk five streets over as a little kid or even father and not worry about it. And today, if a parent let their child do that, they would probably be found, you know, in contempt for doing something wrong. You know, this word city of champions, you know, the first thing is you have these people here that are um, basically because they wanted to come out and listen to what you said and, and, and also share. But Brockton is not going to be successful unless all the people that are out there that, rem that make up the biggest part of the city that also didn't vote, okay, because of apathy or whatever it is, you know, I hear what you're talking about in, in a lot of the development and, and stuff like that. I'm, I'm going to tell you something, at least in my last check. Brockton was number two in the state of Massachusetts for the most violent cities, okay? The last I checked, Brockton was number 61 or 64 is one of the most violent cities in the United States. You can do all your glossy marketing things and, and you can do all this if you don't get crime under control, okay? And I will tell you, okay, go down on Pleasant Street down by Vincentis or whatever in, at late at night and, and watch this town rock and roll, okay? You gotta deal with, you gotta deal with the violence that goes on here, you gotta deal with the drugs and kick these people out of here because as long as it's available, people are gonna buy it, you know? You talked about enforcing things, okay? 
it goes two ways. I don't care what nationality, ethnicity, whatever it is, okay? You should have the same right as everybody to succeed in the city of Brockton, okay? It shouldn't matter. The flip of that is if you break the law, then you pay the price. Everybody pays the price, you know? And if you don't deal with crime, and, and one of the things that I've said for a long time, your police station is from 1965, okay? I thought a couple of times maybe they were gonna bite and put in a new police station and certainly give these people the technology that they need in order to do their jobs. And at one time there was sort of a joke in the enterprise that when they moved the ADA, they were also gonna bring in state police from Middleborough, which never happened. No, it, that, that did happen, Mr. Wynn. Well, the, when the I, CPAC when I, unit of the state police, they're in downtown in the DA's office, they are. Okay, then I, I stand corrected, I stand corrected. All I'm saying to you is that if you don't do something to improve crime, okay, and make people safe, then you're not going to get businesses to move here, you're not going to get people to move here, and you know something, you know, if you don't get the income from the businesses, then where do you go? You're going back to the residents of the city of Brockton to pay taxes because they're going to make up the difference because the money's not there. And all I'm saying is I, I like the fact that you want to market Brockton, but you got to take care of problem number one, and it's not being taken care of and hasn't for years. Thank you very much. Thank you, much. Mr. Wynn. So um, full disclosure, Mr. Wynn lives across the street from me. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, but I, I do want to say a couple of things. He brought up some really ex extremely uh, important um, things. Um, number one, a modern facility for public safety. We've already appropriated funds as a city councilor, 150 grand, I think it was. So was it two, 150 or two? 100, 150 grand to do a feasibility study. Um, we are going to have a modern facility for public safety. It might not be um, fire and police connected together. It could be two freestanding buildings, um, but it needs to happen. And I concur with you, Mr. Wynn. The Brockton Police Station is outdated. It's a dinosaur. It's not welcoming. It's not good for the people that work there. It's definitely not good for the people that need to go there. They don't even know how to get in. You have to go all the way around. Um, you know, the fire station, Sacco and Venzetti got arrested in Brockton years ago, and they were held in the police station slash fire station. We're still using that. Thomas Edison came to Brockton, and he, he electrified the fire station on Pleasant Street. We need to invest the money. We are going to invest the money. I know the city council concurs with that. We need to do it. We need to get a modern facility upgraded with technology that's conducive to law enforcement. Um, in terms of curbing crime, I signed... Uh, uh, I signed a letter the other day um, to go through civil service to hire more police officers, and we will be doing that. Um, when I campaigned, I stressed not just filling spots of retired police officers or firefighters to bring on new recruits as well. We need to. Um, you know, I expect it as a citizen and resident taxpayer, as do you. Um, we need to come up with wraparound services to address the opiate ec epidemic. Um, Young, old, gay, straight, white, black, they're dying from drugs. It doesn't matter. It doesn't discriminate. Um, we also have to look at homelessness. There's not one man or woman that wants to live on the street. We always want a roof over our head. We have to figure out what are the root causes. Alcohol abuse, drug abuse, homelessness could be caused by mental illness. Maybe they lost their house in the foreclosure epidemic. We need to come together with compassion and think about the best services that are going to benefit Brockton. So I concur with you. We can market it, and we can bang the drum on how great it is, but we also have to look at the reality of things that aren't so great right now. We're not going to curb crime. It's going to exist no matter where you live. We can minimize it. The men and women in the back there that put their lives on line, I thank God every day that they do. I don't have that in my fabric, you know, but they do. Um, but we can do a better, better way to better Brockton. I know that, Mr. Wynn, so thank you very much. Any, anybody else want to say anything? No? Thank you. Cindy. Good evening. Good My evening. name is Cindy Ethier Koska, and I do want to mention to Mr. Wynn that I really wish you had been at the District Attorney's Safe uh, Operation Safe Streets meeting last week because he gave a lot of statistics on how crime has gone down in this city. And if you want to see me afterwards, I have photos of the slides so you can see for yourself. 
Um, speaking of crime, um, actually, I know we have police officers up in the back, but I'm really disappointed that our acting police chief is not here tonight to answer any questions that we may have. Uh, I do want to talk first about downtown traffic. Um, everybody knows it takes 30 minutes to get to Brockton from Brockton during commuting hours. Um, we really need more code of, uh, traffic enforcement in downtown Brockton, especially during those commuter hours. For example, the intersection of Main and Legion Parkway Center Street. A lot of cars on Main Street, they block the, they block the box. So cars traveling east and west, they can't get across the street. That causes a bottleneck. Warren Avenue, Montello Street, um, and we really need to do something about that. It's something I've been talking about for a few years. Uh, you mentioned the homeless um, downtown. Yeah, we have a lot of them. Um, I just told Bob Malley from the Parking Authority that they're already in the new Carpenter Garage. I looked out my windows a couple nights ago. They were on the second floor. They're trying to keep warm. I get it. But we need to do something about that. We really need to stop being reactive in Brockton. We need to be proactive. We need Father Bills to start really doing something. We need the other communities that are dumping their problems in Brockton to step up to the plate and take care of their citizens and making it our taxpayers' problems. For example, I have a woman every single night, like clockwork, under my bedroom window. I feel really bad for her, I truly do, but when she's out there yelling and screaming profanities at nobody, that's affecting my quality of life. I live at Enterprise Center, the newest building downtown built five years ago. I moved out of my house that I lived in for 46 years in Camp Pello. I moved to downtown Brockton. And that's what I'm putting up with. And I'm paying a lot of money to live in that building. So I have called the police numerous times. If they come, they move her along. As soon as they're gone, she's right back. You know, there's bigger problems for the police to be dealing with than me to keep calling to say, move this person along. But it needs to be done. You know, these cold winter nights, they're out there. I've called the police. They keep coming back. For some reason, the services are not getting to these people to take care of them. And we need to do a better job. There is absolutely no excuse for anyone to be on our streets of Brockton. I agree. Tonight, coming here, as I'm going up Legion Parkway, I see them all looking for their places to go. As Mr. Wynn said, if you want business, this has to stop. And it's not just Brockton, and I understand that. But we need to do a better job, and we're not. Also, code enforcement, let's get it done. We've been talking about this. It's a broken record. Spend the money, hire some new people, train more people, get out there, and hit these people in their wallet. That is the only way that we are going to get the city cleaned up. When I ran for city council this past election, I drove around, not just Ward 5 where I ran, but all over this city, and I had a list of things that should have been enforced. And I don't know those laws, but we have people that do, and it's not being done. And as a taxpayer of the city, I'm fed up with it. It needs to stop. And under your administration, Bob, I want to see changes. Well, you will. You know, you will. I'm the last person of the Ethier family left in this city. We came here in the late 1860s. My family worked in those shoe industry. Shoe industry's gone. Yeah, we have foot joy in the village. All they do is design. There's no manufacturing fur here. It's done. We need to stop worrying about Rocky Marciano and riding on his coattails. We need to look at the future and stop looking at the past because while we may learn from the past, we've got a future that we need to prepare for and we're not doing it enough. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. I mean, Cindy just, if you don't know Cindy or her son, Chris, I mean, they live and breathe and bleed Brockton. Even my kids have left this city. Yeah, but Chris still comes back. He talks to me now and then. But, but this, is, this is what I think. Um, we have to recognize the wrongs that are going on right now, right? I mean, we, have to, we have to recognize them. Um, all I can tell you is this is my uh, fourth Monday. Uh, fourth, yeah, Monday was my fourth uh, week on the job. Um, if anybody that works at City Hall uh, has recognized during my meetings with them, um, what I see is, is, you know, what I say is the truth. There's no BS with me. I, uh, I kind of wear it on my sleeve, um, but it's home. And um, 
We have to do better. And again, I've said it before, if codes are on the books and you're violating, you pay the price. If we need to work with my colleagues on the city council to increase the fines, um, we'll do that. Um, but at the end of the day, you have an expectation, I have an expectation. We have uh, someone on my team in my office, Corin Capiello, that's helping uh, foster a better working relationship with the homeless uh, societies here and the clergy. Um, and it's a paramount. Mayor Rodriguez did a forum at the War Memorial. Um, we can't just do these one-off meetings, you know? And this is a meeting that's not a one-time event. We're gonna keep having these meetings. The ward councilors, the councilors at large have their meetings, school committee. Um, but when someone like Cindy comes up and stresses it, she speaks from the heart, and we have to learn from that, you know? But rest assured, and I said it before, if I'm a one-term mayor two years, there's gonna be improvements as long as I'm here, as long as I'm here. And um, the difference is we have people on the city council, school committee, in the mayor's office, superintendent, that care about Brockton and wanna work together for positive change. And people that aren't elected officials, you know, I applaud you for running for office, don't give up. That's how we better our community. But it's people that don't wanna run for duly elected office, that still wanna see a better day now, but more importantly for the future. You know, and the gentleman from Father Bills is here. We have a meeting coming up as well. Thank you for being here. You know, the only way, in my humble opinion, to have a better Brockton is to have these type of forums. Don't push people aside, listen to them, learn from them and ultimately develop, again, a business plan and execute it, and execute it, and execute it. And you're gonna have the naysayers, that's fine. I don't listen to the negativity or the toxic stuff on social media. I know who I am, you know who you are, let's come together to get it done. You know, we will get it done. So send me your resume, because you wanna go on a board as well, so thank you. Anybody else? Oh, Inez, how are you? I'm fine. Thanks for being here. Thank you. My question yes. is, what are the city of Brackton doing for the census of 2020? Thank you. I know that the school superintendent and the library are working hard supporting the census 2020. But I want to know what is the city doing? Because in 2017, the census in Brackton was a whole. It was bad. So I want to know, because I, I work with the leader in the, this community, and I want every Latino to register to for the censo. But I want to know what is the city going to do and what they're doing to support the censo 2020. Thank you, Inez. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's, let's be clear about this. If we discard right now the census 2020, we are losing money, serious money. We need to get it right. Mayor Rodriguez, to his credit, hired an individual. Please come up on stage. Her whole focus, she works at City Hall, her whole focus is geared to the 2020 census. We need to capitalize on this. I was in Washington, I sat in on two different seminars about the importance of the census for municipalities. Not just money, okay, but getting an actual hard number of how many people live in Brockton, number one, and also down the line, maybe the congressional seat that we lost in Massachusetts, we could pick that up as well. But at the end of the day, she's charged to work with my office, my team, and Brocktonians to get it right. You have the floor. Thank you, good evening everyone. Thanks for the chance to speak to you all today. Um, so like Mayor Sullivan said, I was hired by the city to spread the word, but one voice is not enough. I need the whole city to be engaged um, with me and to join forces. I need leaders like Inez, who I just spoke with as she walked in. I need leaders like Lynn, I believe your name is, um, to be engaged. So the effort is and the importance is that everyone needs to be counted. We already know that. Um, every year, uh, the numbers are taken for the residents in Brockton for our, you know, here for the city. This census is big, and this is the federal one that is done every 10 years. If we don't count the residents of Brockton properly, we're going to live with the consequences for 10 years, because it's only going to be done in 2030. Uh, the next time it is done again. So it is important that we spread the word and we speak to our neighbors, we teach our kids, uh, we count everyone that is even not at home that might be at a hospital or nursing home, everyone needs to be counted from the youngest to the oldest. Um, what, what are we doing? We're trying to engage the public schools and um, Mike Thomas is 
very um, engaged already with us. He's working with us um, in, in, in bringing all parents and kids and uh, with a new community center coming also um, at the North Junior High. Uh, we're going to try to have events there as well. We're going to um, have an event on February 24th, if I'm not mistaken, at the Brockton Public Library also to speak about the census. We need ideas from you guys, from the community as well. If you have any ideas that can come um, and you know, reinforce this message being put out there, it is welcome. Um, I have a table outside with more information. Uh, please come and speak to me. Uh, there's also jobs available for census takers, uh, part-time jobs, uh, temporary jobs, but jobs that pay very well, that, you know, it's, you know, a little extra cash, but um, jobs that are important to, um, to just go to the ones that did not respond. By April 1st, it's Census Day, um, you will receive uh, invitation in your mail to respond to the census online. If you don't do it by April 1st, then you're going to have a census taker come and knock on your door and try to help uh, everyone that did not respond to respond either online, by phone, or by mail, which is the three options that we have this year for the first time. Um, so there's also uh, that information outside on the table. Please come to me, speak to me, help me, because I need your help. Alone, like I said, I cannot do it. We need members in the community that are leaders that have a loud voice to go out there and uh, help spread the importance of the census for our city. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ava. Um, so one, one thing that we're going to use, and we used it for this um, uh, meeting tonight, is the billboards on 24, the digital billboards that advertise this engagement meeting tonight. Um, doesn't cost Brockton, the taxpayers, a dime, because when they were licensed, there's a condition in there that the city of Brockton can use those for PR and for marketing. Um, we need to do that for the census, but we also need to do it for other events. You know, I'll give you an example, Brockton High Drama or, or the Christmas con holiday concert, whatever. It hasn't been used. Um, it's something that I've charged the city solicitor law department to look into. And so tonight's event was publicized on two digital billboards. We're going to continue to do that. Um, but a Ava's uh, work every day is to try to make it a campaign. Many of you have run for office, a political campaign, so we have to treat the census like a campaign for Brockton. Because, again, what she said is true. If we miss the boat now, we gotta wait 10 years. So there's so much money at stake, so much benefit to the city of Brockton. So let's, let's really spread the word on that because it's vitally important. It really, really is. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Sullivan. Listen, I, um, I actually, I don't need that. Um, I, I just, I echo the crime thing because no one's gonna come. But, um, and two other things that's already been, the light at Pearl Street has already been addressed, so that's awesome. Yep. But my thing is, is that, is code enforcement, is that part of um, making sure that businesses clean up outside of their th thing? Because I have to walk through piles of trash just to get to a business, just to get to like Family Dollar or Dollar Tree or Shores or, um, it, it doesn't matter where it is, I'm just tired of going through trash and nobody wants to live in a dirty city. And my other thing is, is why can't my recycling be picked up every week? I have so many boxes. I know maybe I'm an Amazon freak, but <laughs> I'm saying that I have a lot, like most people shop online now. I can't get my recycling out. Like I have to get people to come in and take all this stuff out of my basement. It's ridiculous. And um, the trash barrels are too small, but if I can get this recycling thing, <laughs> yeah, no. I, just to, I'm such, I, so, I can't stand clutter. So a couple things. So my wife's name is on Freak as well, so we have a lot of blocks <laughs> in my house. One thing is, so the contract was signed um, by a previous mayor um, with Republic, um, used to be Allied Waste. Um, the, the city council, and specifically Council President Azak, um, when they were coming up with the recycle bins and the trash bins, she, surely to her credit, wanted to have the city emblem on it. Now, one thing is, what I did, because I have three kids and a lot of recycling, you get one, okay, but you can go down to Oak Hill Way, spend 35 bucks, which I've done, to buy a second recycling uh, box, a bin. So now I put out two every week, one that the city gave me, one that I paid for, and I can do double. Um, the contract doesn't allow for weekly uh, single stream pickup for recycle, um, as opposed to the rubbish. 
why the rubbish barrel is so small, and Larry, you know this, is um, it was following the ordinance on the books, the actual size and diameter. Do I think it's too small? Absolutely. Do I have to buy the green? You know, now they only give you four. They used to give you five. Yeah. The green Brockton bags, yes, I do. But I do know this. Listen, recycling and going green is extremely important. One thing that when I was elected mayor on January 6th, I said, to my amazement, we are not recycling at City Hall. People are throwing out papers. It's asinine. What are we, do what are we doing? What kind of, this, what does that set? So effective immediately, we're recycling at City Hall, um, and, and we need to do it. Those are the things we need to do. Now, the council president could probably opine on a little more than me because she was vital to that, um, but I just don't know if people know that. You can buy an additional recycling. I think it was 35 bucks or 37 bucks it cost me, so that's how I get through the Amazon boxes because they're everywhere at my house. <laughs> council president. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Thank you for inviting, um, inviting us to be a part of this. Um, what's really important is that everybody's talking and everybody's bringing up their issues, even though sometimes they seem to be the same ones. So the recycling issue and the trash is issue has come up many times, and you did give the correct information, Mayor. I'm not um, surely exact uh, of an exact price of what an extra barrel would cost if... Um, but I know it is available to you, and um, it's, okay. Our DPW commissioner says it's $50 for an extra uh, barrel for recycling. I know when the contract was up, um, we're going on, what, two years, I believe, we, um, the DPW commissioner and then Mayor Carpenter and a few uh, members put together a committee, and they really studied the new contract and the, um, the you know, it went out to bid, so the companies really, they, they didn't want to go up, we didn't want to go up and it cost to the residents. We really, it was studied very well and that's why the barrels are the way they are and that's why recycling's every uh, two weeks because um, we learned from communities surrounding, um, surrounding Brockton. We had gone to a few meetings and they stated that they weren't able to fill, not everybody can fill the barrel every week and we do pay to have it picked up so it was a way to keep the cost down so a lot of thought went into it it wasn't just um you know decided but anytime anybody has any questions please feel free to call your counselors which my colleagues i know uh, the ward councils have meetings the at-larges have a meeting but um, they have numbers, you can call them, they'll do their best to um, answer your questions. But once again, I applaud Mayor Sullivan for having this. Even though it's the same information or same questions being asked, but at least you know we're all listening and we're hoping that um, this makes a difference. So thank you, thank you, Mayor. We'll go there and then there, how's that? Okay. Hi, how are you? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Terry McIntosh. Um, my husband and myself are certainly a Brocktonian. Um, grew up in Brockton, raising our family, have a home in Brockton. Um, the biggest thing that I listened to during the campaign um, over the, the last several months was about how you were all going to be coming together as a team. So I came this evening pretty much to see for myself if this was going to happen and to see the superintendent and the city council and the school committee and the mayor all together is a very positive vision for me to see as a parent, as someone in Brockton, as resident. But more importantly, um, having young children, obviously the crime, we all have the same concern there. But I will tell you, um, I have to give ever who's in the last three to four weeks, picking up my child, I live on the west side, my children, and I have to go to the other side of Brockton to pick up my children, I go through downtown. Um, I am seeing so much more school police at the schools, not at just Brockton High School, where I usually see them living on the west side, but every elementary school I'm passing, picking up my ch children, and that is so, I, I have to give credit to wherever that's deserved, because it is so nice to pull in your child's school and to see a patrol over, um, and it's the school police, and I really thank whoever who's, that is a plus. Thank you for that. But another thing um, I need to say, I have two very young children, um, first and second grade, and we went to a, the lovely birthday celebration at City Hall, and Lynn did a very nice job with the story. And just last week, um, my son said to me, Mom, look at all the lights on at the birthday place we went to at City Hall. And I'm like, what do you mean? All the curtains are open. So 
Even young children at the age five and six years old are seeing a positive vision of City Hall. And to me, two children sitting in the back seat of a car coming home from school, reckon all the, all the curtains are open. Mommy, look at the lights on. And to me, I'm like, you know what? That's a positive thing for our children, even at such a young age. So I just want to thank City Hall or however this change is taking place, but you don't realize that it's affecting the young children of Brockton that we want to make a positive impression for these children. And that one little thing that's being, that took place made a difference in these two little boys' eyes, and I just have to applaud that. So it's a start. We have a long way to go. But seeing you as a team up here this evening, I thank you for that. I know you have a big job ahead of all of you, but thank you for being together as a team. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. And um, so just, just a couple follow-ups. I, I want to thank the, school, uh, the city council last night. They, uh, uh, they, they voted on special police officers, and the special police officers are the school police, the men and women that, that make a difference. Uh, they work in conjunction with Brockton PD. They're based out of here. Um, Mike Thomas uh, does a wonderful job. So thank you for acknowledging the visibility. In terms of the curtains, thank you for noticing that because when I came in, I said, what the hell? Why is it so dark in this place? The curtains have been up there for 22 years. I said, they're coming down. Open it up. Make it brighter. Make it more welcoming. So thank you. You're the only one that noticed that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Joanne. Hello, Mr. Hi. Mayor, folks. My name is Joanne Zygmunt. Um, so water is increasingly recognized as a driver of health and prosperity worldwide. In fact, some of you may have seen the recent Enterprise article that quoted our city planner as identifying our plentiful water sources as a key um, driver for economic growth in the city. So Brockton's water supply has been a critical issue since the founding of the city and peri periodically since. Our limited surface water supply has taken 15 miles to the east of the city and is known to have significant issues with water quality from Monponset Pond and negative environmental impacts by taking so much from Silver Lake. What steps would you take to expand and stabilize Brockton's water supply, its quality, and the negative influence we have on the regional environment so that Brockton has a truly reliable supply to sustain us and development in the coming decades, and so that we don't have to have this conversation again in 25 years? Yeah, thank you. And um, I had a nice uh, uh, sit down with Joanne recently, and she educated me a lot on water. Um, that's her specialty. And, um, Thankfully, she just took a jog with OCPC here at Brockton, so we're going to be able to utilize her expertise. Um, let's talk about a couple things. Let's talk about Aquaria, um, secondary water source that was mandated by the state for Brockton. Um, we could talk about piping. Uh, there's some pipes here in Brockton that are 1880s. Um, you know, discoloration of water. Um, you know, we need to invest some money in the, in the above ground infrastructure, but also below ground. But I just want to talk about Aquaria real, real quick, if I could, because for 14 years as a city councilor, I was really, really, really uh, offended by the principles of Aquaria that when we would request them to come before us, they would blow us off. They would not come before us. They always had these lame excuses. We're in Miami. We can't come here. And my humble suggestion was, well, come here because we're a customer of yours and you're in a contract. And let's, let's step up to the plate. They didn't come before us until we cut all their money out of the budget. And then they, they came quick and uh, they came often. What I will say to this is, is Mayor Rodriguez entered into um, a, a letter of uh, intent, not a contract, a letter of intent. The late mayor, Bill Carpenter, had contemplating purchasing Aquaria, secondary water source, for $78 million. Mayor Rodriguez has entered into a letter of intent that gives us, the city of Brockton, to, until March 31st to do our due diligence to see if we'd want to acquire that asset for $64 million. Now, I'm the new mayor, and my th thought is this. Let's pump the brakes for a second, and let's look at the good and bad of acquiring an asset such as Aquaria. Now, the good thing is it would be our asset, okay? It would be a fixed price. We have to spend $7 million a year for the next nine years. That's our contract, our obligation. That's $63 million bucks, okay? So if you look at it from a money standpoint, cost analysis, perhaps it makes sense. My thought is this. As the CEO of the city of Brockton, we're going to spend time to look at that. We have outdated two-year information about potentially acquiring that. Um, we have to look at the long-term uh, financial costs. Anybody that works for Aquaria would become City of Brockton employees, including their retirement, OPED benefits, and liabilities. 
I'm not saying that we wouldn't acquire it. This is my concern, ladies and gentlemen. What I said to the people that came up from Miami is, why is Brockton your only customer? Why don't you have any other customers? All these municipalities. Now, is it just because you know you're getting seven million bucks a year from us? That's kind of short-sighted from a business perspective, but why aren't you trying to reach out? What are your marketing endeavors? Do you go to the MMA? The gentleman said, I don't know what the MMA is. It's says, the Mass Municipal Association annual meeting. That's where you meet everybody at every city town in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So, we, the city of Brockton, and me as the mayor, are working right now with our CFO and working with our outside uh, consultants to see if it does make sense. The other thought is, would the state, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, ever say uh, in nine years from now, Brockton, you don't need a secondary water source? Um, I don't think that that's a reality. I'm pretty sure and confident that is not. They're going to tell us we do. But one thing I, I am sure is we have to come up with some alternative water resources. And I'm going to rely on you for your expertise on this, because right now, the people that live in the neighboring communities that are but Silver Lake are pretty ticked off the city of Brockton, how much we draw. Uh, and the residents of Brockton are pretty ticked off, depending on where they live, about the quality of water, specifically up in Jack Lally's ward, Jeff Thompson's ward, State Rep. Michelle Dubois' ward, uh, the discoloration of the water. Former uh, colleague Ann Beauregard would always stress to us that. So is there a corrective action that we can do as a city? Um, I would say yes. Do I think 64 million bucks is the solution at this time? I don't know, I don't know. All I do know is that if we acquire this asset, I wanna have full faith and confidence that we're gonna get neighboring communities to tie in. Now, one thought is they might tie in on a seasonal way, okay, so it would generate some revenue for seasonal. They might shut the spigot off in fall or winter. Maybe that makes sense from a dollar standpoint. To Moses' credit, to the Mayor Rodriguez's and now Council Lodge credit, he gives us until March 31st to look at that. I have a meeting with Aquaria this week, right, Troy? It's this week. Is it tomorrow or Thursday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah, at 4 o'clock. Um, I want to get a crack at them. I believe that as the mayor, I get a chance to try to negotiate in good faith. I'm a lawyer. I've negotiated for 22 plus years as a different sheriff in town. Nothing against other people that negotiated with them. They know I don't like them anyhow. So. Let's, let's talk, you know, step up to the plate and see where we are. You know, if we can get it to a dollar amount that makes sense and we can amortize that over 20 years, get a municipal bond, yeah, maybe it pays for itself. We attract businesses, Easton, you know, um, Weymouth, you know, the old, uh, the development down there that used to be the, uh, the, uh, the military, what's it, the air, what was it again? Yeah, Naval Air, I mean, they're talking about tie-in for water. I don't know geographically, distance-wise, if that makes sense. But it would be short-sighted as a mayor of Brockton and as a city council and school committee and state reps and state senate not to look at all alternatives. But rest assured, Joanne, I'm going to have you come and talk to me because I'm going to value your expertise because you have it and you're right across the street from me now. So uh, get ready, okay? Thank you. Good evening. Good evening, new mayor of Brockton, Mr. Uh, Robert F. Sullivan. Congratulations on a new election. Thank you, election. sir. As Thank the you. fifth mayor of Brockton. Thank you very much. My name is Arthur J. Tavares. I'm a, I came from a family of 13. Been living in Brockton for 30, uh, 90 years. I've been around in Brockton before. My brother moved in. You've created J. Tavares. Built a family. Uh, but my question to you are five, uh, if I may say, if I may. My first question is, what makes Brockton number one city of Massachusetts, number one city of champions? Question number two, what takes for Brockton to be well characterized, characterized as individually good city, as a good, all good citizens, all good people? Question number three, Mr. Sullivan, why choosing Brockton as a mayor? I know you grew up in Brockton, you like Brockton, I like Brockton, I love Brockton. Uh, number, question number four, what is in store for Brockton citizens, Cape Verdeans? Spanish, Brazilian, Asian, Italian, if you may say, if I don't say that. Uh, question number five, which president would you like those three? President, former President Obama, former President George Bush, former President Bill Clinton, to come to Brockton, to be part of a Brockton prosperity, growth, good, good, good citizens for all, good people, and good Americans. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your interest and uh, great questions. So number one, the biggest thing about Brockton, the people, right? The people are the number one asset. I've said this before, if Brockton was a stock, we should all be buying it because it is the people, the people that are here tonight, people that couldn't make it here. That's what makes Brockton, Brockton. Um, Brockton has always been a city of immigrants, right? My grandparents came from Ireland to work in the factories. Maria, my wife's great grandparents came from Italy. It's just a different wave of immigrants that come here now, right? I, uh, I jumped in a cab. I, I have to be honest, I skipped one of the seminars down in DC. I jumped in a cab to go meet Carlos Viega, who is the ambassador, and I went to the embassy of Cape Verde. And I sat down with Mr. Ambassador, and we talked for an hour and 20 minutes about Brockton and Cape Verde and how the relationship is ever expanding and how we can expand upon that. Now, we also have wonderful people from Haiti, Nigeria, Angola. That's what makes Brockton, Brockton, right? So we need to come together as one, make sure that everybody, no matter what ethnic background you are, you feel that you count, you have a voice, you have a friend at City Hall. My good friend right here, Jimmy Pereira, Jimmy's a friend of mine. Jimmy ran for office. I hope to God he runs again. Maybe not against me, but, <laughs> but, but again, listen, he, he's a family man. He cares about the community. He's here tonight. That's what we need to do. You turn the page on elections, you win some, you lose some, but you come together as one. That's, that's what makes Brockton Brockton, right? So in terms of how we're going to embrace diversity and people together, I will be honest with you. I am relying on each and every one of you to offer you know, your support and your embrace as we take it to the next level. We need to come together. You know? We cannot feel that we can succeed to the next level of success in the city of Brockton if there's one person, one group, one entity that feels like they're marginalized because they're not. They're not. Now, someone said this to me, and I tell this story, and people say, ah, someone said to me, why would I ever vote for you? You're 50 and you're white. It happened, this happened. I knocked on someone's door, this is what someone said to me. I said, listen, with all due respect, I can't change my age, can't change my color, but together, the key word together, we can change Brockton. We can change Brockton together. So again, when you run for office locally, it's nonpartisan. So my friends that are Democrats, Republican, unenrolled independents can vote for me. So to answer your question about Obama, Bush, or Clinton, I say I want all three of them here. I want all three of them here. I think that those three individuals in their own right, you know, if you look at the historical track record, they've done some wonderful things. I will say that all the mayors that were in D.C. last week got invited to the White House to meet Trump. I'm not in that picture. I didn't go there. Uh, that's a personal decision. I didn't go there. Now, how we can capitalize on bettering Brockton together, how we can do that is we need to reach out to the different religious organizations, right, the different clergy. Um, we need to reach out to the different associations, the Cape Verdean Association, Haitian Association. You know, that's the only way we can do it together, okay? And remember, I only speak English. There's people that come into City Hall that speak multiple languages. I met a, a woman today that speaks five languages. I applaud her. I know one other word other than English, and it's a swear in Gaelic that my grandmother taught me many years ago, and I won't say it. But I'll tell you one thing. When I look at someone like Jimmy, you know, or I, I look at Rita, you know, or Wynn Fowler, Suna Castro, you know, or Jeff, um, you know, or Tim, or Jack, or anybody up here, or anybody on the school committee. Um, we have two representatives of Southeastern Regional as well. We have state reps, we have state senators. We can do better, right? We can have a reflection of City Hall that really looks better. The question, the first one was to Mr. Thomas and I about how we can get teachers, you know, of diverse backgrounds that look more like the students that they're teaching. But again, we can only do that by not being afraid to discuss it. We need to talk to talk, but we need to walk to walk. And for as long as I'm the mayor, we're going to do that. But again, I'm relying on each and every one of you to guide me through this. You know, that ship is on a path, but it's on a path for success together. Jay. It's me again. <laughs> uh, are you looking for a place for the police station? You know Stop and Shop is closing on Belmont Street. I do. I do. March I 28th. You could tear it down and build them both. So a couple things about that. I had a meeting the other night with a guy named Tim Bowman who represents Trader Joe's. And I said, you know what, Tim, why don't you think about coming to Brockton, Trader Joe's? That or would Whole be Foods. awesome. Now, this is the endeavor that we learned 
on the south side of the city of Brockton when Shaw's left the south side, just abandoned it. Councilor Stadensky at the time, former police chief, Paul and I met with the powers to be at Shaw's. They wouldn't meet us here in Brockton. We had to meet them at Town Hall in West Bridgewater. And what they said was amazing. We are gonna keep that place vacant until our lease is up. And what Paul and I said, that is short-sighted and it's offensive to Brocktonians. And they said, it's a business decision. We would rather keep it vacant than have a competition in there. So we need to look at how long the lease is with Stop and Shop right now. Again, that is, that is owned by a private individual, that building. Um, and if there's a way for us to get in there um, and bring uh, a tax-paying business in there, I'm all for it. Trader Joe's? Huh? Trader Joe's? Well, I had a conversation with a guy. I'm not making any promises, but I'm going to be banging the drum until we get somebody in there. We can't afford to have vacant properties. We can't afford to, you know? <laughs> what I will say in terms of the public safety building, um, there was some, some, at the time, there was some proposals under the feasibility. One was the CSX property, which is now called the Brook Trout property development over there. And I know the fire chief at that time was opposed to that because of geographic distance to Route 24 when the fire have to report is too far away. Um, uh, chief Crowley of the Brockton PD liked that area. Um, you know, the old Brockton High School on Warren Ave is another, another, you know, the building is still there. We could raz that. Um, we need to figure out from a feasibility and a financial component how we do it, but I know it has to be done. It has to be done. Um, I don't think the stop and shop is the property because the west side where the chief is, we're not going to be closing that fire station. Um, but again, Jay, rest assured, as long as I'm in there, uh, I want to hear your suggestions. And ultimately, we have to figure out what the best thing is for Brockton. I have one more thing. Yes. Going back to the recycling. Yes, sir. Some people don't recycle. My neighbors on either side of me, my neighbors on the left buy the green bags. My neighbors on the right don't recycle. And their trash can is overflowing. And the, out of the recycle bin is trash and out of the trash can is trash. Why does the trash department pick up trash in the recycling bin? Well, it's not, it's not the trash department, it's a private entity that we contract with called Republic and they should not because the city of Brockton, all of us, right, we get, we get, we, we pay that freight, right? And it's, it's based but on weight do. base. I, I well, then Mr. Mr. Raleigh from DPW Commission, I mean, he has a direct contact with, with Republic. We can address that. Um, you know, I saw uh, the Christmas trees uh, this year getting thrown in, uh, you know, into trucks that shouldn't have been thrown in. Um, so again, when you see stuff like that, don't hesitate to call my office or call Larry. Because again, we're not gonna stop it right then, it's already happened. But again, now that we're on notice, we tell them, hey, you have a contractual obligation. And if they're not abiding by it, it's like the code enforcement. It is what it is. You abide by it. I did call once, and they... they, they not when I was mayor, Jay. No. <laughs> the other guy. <laughs> okay. I, 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 <laughs> you and then, and, and then Jimmy. Good evening. How you, do, how you doing, Mr. Mayor? My name is Michael Noons. I'm a Ward 7 resident. Hey, Michael. How are you? I don't know if you're familiar with yeah, my face. Absolutely. I ran Australia yeah, you're running for office. Absolutely. Right, that's good. So we have 30 minutes. I have a lot of questions, but I don't want to take everyone's time here. I'm just ask one question. Sure. Um, everybody's talking about the CSX lot, one of development. Um, since I was a child, I don't know if you're familiar, but the Mulberry lot, there's a lot, uh, I think Equal took over that lot now. Um, it's an eyesore. There's a tower standing, smoke tower standing. It's been up for a while now. And I noticed down the side is cracking. I mean, I don't mind the tower. I actually like it, it's a monument for the city. Mm -hmm. I think we should focus in that lot and connect it with the CSX lot with the means by extending Route 37 all the way down from Route 37 to the south side of Brockton, which if you look at the map, it makes sense. I mean, it's only one particular way we have to break through, which one home stands in the way of that way. I mean, I think it's a good idea, and that's what I think, you know, I'm just, Throwing them ideas no, and, and thank you for running for office and do yeah. it again. It's, it's better. It's better the community. What I will say this is: is CSX property is not owned by the city of Brockton. It's privately owned by the railroad company. Um, Rob May, our city planner, couldn't be here tonight. He's actually in Somerville uh, at another meeting to try to benefit Brockton. And I told him, please go because we want Brockton to benefit. What I would um, encourage and, and ask you is, let's have a sit down with Mr. May and yourself. Again, because it's not owned by the city of Brockton, it's not as easy as just doing a cut through. Yeah. Um, but I do know that CSX is based in Florida uh, and they are looking to dispose of that property at some point. 
Um, that's why they've done a, a, a name change. It's not called CSX, it's called Brook Trout Development. Um, but I hadn't thought of that. I mean, I think it's, it's a good idea. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't discount it, but I think there's a couple things we would have to contemplate prior to that. Um, but by all means, before I leave, I'll give you my card. I'd love you to give me a buzz and we'll set up a meeting and talk about it. Yes, of course. Thank, Thank you. you, Michael. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pereira. Sir, Jim, hey, how are you? how's it going? Thank you, sir. The toughest question of the night. <laughs> Cape Cod or Tin Rays? <laughs> just well, talking, just I had Cape Cod this morning, <laughs> I mean this afternoon, uh, and Kerry loved it, my new uh, chief of staff. But when I go up to Ten Rays, Joe Murray makes a great there pizza you too. Good so, uh, you know, I like West Side Pizza, I like George, I like them all. There you go. But I'm on the keto diet right now. I've lost 63 pounds, so I can't really eat that See? stuff anymore. But I envy you. No, uh, good, good answer. You got to uh, spread, spread the love. But um, two things. Uh, uh, wearing the... Uh, the citizens hat, I uh, appreciate you uh, conducting this. This is what it's really about, and this is what uh, we see as planners and community activists and as residents. This is what we want and hope to see more of and more, hope to see uh, more of the, uh, the uh, feedback as well, too, and uh, keeping up with people. Uh, now, switching over to my planner's hat, uh, I am back at the old Connie Planning Council, uh, so that means... Thank you, thank you. So that means back to work and uh, back to the workload as well. So the first thing that we are focusing on is the Main Street Corridor Study. Uh, and we will, of course, be sitting down with the mayor's office and all the department heads to see how we could come together and collaborate. Uh, but right now on the OCPC website, which is the OCPCRPA.org, we have the Main Street Survey. And we need a lot of help getting it out there and making sure that people provide feedback. Uh, this study will look at the three sections of uh, Main Street, so from Avon all the way down to uh, the West Bridgewater Line. Uh, we will be looking at, of course, all the uh, data and information that has been provided for the two-way Main Street study. Uh, we are conducting our own studies as well, too, and we have already compiled the data. Uh, and, of course, having public uh, meetings. The first one will be February 18th. Uh, so for those at home as well, too, please make sure you uh, come down and write that down, put that in the calendar. What time is that, Jimmy? 6 p.m. at the main library downstairs. We will provide food. We'll try to provide something healthy for you. <laughs> um, usually it's, it's pizza, um, but we'll uh, switch it up this time around. So. Uh, we have May Waldron here also for our new executive director, OCPC, and my mentor. Now I could pick a brain, ask her, you know, how does it feel to work in the mayor's office? Since I'm not there, but we'll make sure we pay you a visit at least, right? Um, and uh, making sure, again, that we have public feedback. So we need that. We want to make sure you go visit, this, uh, uh, take the survey. Uh, and again, uh, see you all February 18th and uh, other visit meetings to come as well, too. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank and you. Thank you for better in Brockton. Really, I mean that. For. See you. So um, I, I've had two different occasions since I've been mayor to sit at OCPC. I've been with Jimmy. I've been with Mary. I do want to say, and I want to thank her. So yesterday, myself, Council President Azak, Jeff Thompson, Jack Lally, um, State Representative Dubois, Cronin, um, Cassidy, Senator Brady, um, uh, Rob May, um, Sarah Units from Massasoit, Massasoit's provost, we all went into the State House to testify yesterday. Uh, relative to the Christo site. Now, the Christo site, again, was sold from the Zaganis family, Mr. Zaganis, who was Christo himself. The daughters sold it to DCAM. If we think back in time when the governor was the Val Patrick, there was two promises made at that time. The bond money had already been appropriated where we were going to have a downtown college collaborative in downtown the, where the Ganley building is, right? So Brockton sold it to the Commonwealth, to DCAM for a buck. And then the Zaganis family sold their property, Christos II and Christos, um, to DCAM, to the Commonwealth, for a, a projected uh, health science building for the Massasoit Community College. Fast forward, new governor came in, the bonding got cut. Um, thanks to the efforts of the state reps and the, and the senator, the Ganley building's back on track. It's not going to be a college collaborative, but we're going to have a, a Massasoit component there. Um, but the Christos property is going to be sold. So we all traveled into Boston yesterday. It was a hearing, a one o'clock hearing, joint, joint committee, House side, Senate side. And uh, I do want to thank the three reps and the senator to have us in there and speak because my view is this. City of Brockton has a vested interest in that site. We don't own it anymore, but we want to make sure, first of all, that a proper development goes there. We also want to make sure that the money of the sale goes to Massasoit, high percentage of the students from Massasoit are from Brockton. So we need to make sure that they don't get shortchanged on that. And we also have to remember that it's in such uh, a unique geographic area right there, right? And Jeff, you know this, and Jack, you know this. Um, traffic flow, so we want the right development there. So I want to thank everybody that 
took time off to go into Boston. Um, I did get feedback that the reps and the senators heard our plea. They want to work with us and work for us. So, you know, just wanted to kind of give you an update on that. So um, thank you to Mary and thank you to Jimmy and thank you to Joanne at OCPC. And please, February 18th, 6 o'clock, if we get more than 50 people there, I'll have two slices of pizza, I promise you. Hello, everybody. Um, congratulations, uh, Mayor Sullivan. And, thank you, Angel. And school committee. Thank you. Um, superintendent and um, city council presidents. And it's a testament for you to uh, have these folks up here. I have, a, I have a couple of things that I want to share with the community based on some feedback and then a question that I would like to pose. Um, the first one is pertaining to uh, the question about Texan, what's being done about that. And I don't know if everyone knows, but there's a new law. Uh, actually, I was at a Democratic City Committee meeting, and Representative Cassidy mentioned that some of the work that was done here locally, and um, Mayor Sullivan, when you were uh, a, a, a city councilor, we had met with a foundation that was working on teen driver safety. That's right. And he actually credited that work to uh, enforce or pass a, a, a new law that is uh, in Massachusetts called the hands-free law. And yep. so I encourage everyone to look at that. It has uh, fines and violations for texting while you're driving. So there is something being done at the state level. Um, so I just wanted to uh, inform folks about that. Also, I'm very proud of this. When I was a, a teacher at Brockton High School, um, that foundation submitted a video that actually won in the whole state for a public safety campaign on safe driving. And it's uh, Issa's Wealth Foundation uh, with Pastor Francis who lost her son a couple of years ago due to uh, an accident here locally. So I want to give testament and, and credit to, to that foundation that helped to uh, pass this legislation. Um, the second thing is, just recently today, and I, I have to give credit to Barbara Brooks at BAMSI. Um, I run a site called Brockton Volunteers. I post a lot of things on that. Um, they posted today a list of food pantries. Um, a really extensive list of food pantries, and so I want to encourage everyone. We, we talked a lot about the homeless and the situation there. That's one way that we could help um, to spread the word on, on the, many, the many pantries. My question now is um, pertaining to a very tragic situation that has been occurring in, this, in the island that my parents are from, uh, Puerto Rico. There's been over thousands of earthquakes on the island, and just today there was a 7.1 magnitude earthquake in Jamaica, and I know that we have a Jamaican population here as well. My question is, I've heard it rumored that the city's trying to do something around that, um, and so my question is, what is being done to mobilize the people and help those communities that we have a large representation of here locally? Yeah, and Angel, and, and, and thank you, and I, I, again, I met with you and Pastor Francis after, after the passing, and, and it was a catalyst for bringing on some change, so thank you. Um, I, I've met with a, a Ward II resident, Tito Quiones, uh, and his wife, um, you know, uh, Puerto Rican descendants. Um, we need to figure out collectively um, how we can address that. And at this point, I'm not sure what that is. If that's, you know, sending over supplies and food, um, you know, welcoming people that have relatives here. Um, you know, we have to understand that there's people dying. Um, in my humble opinion, um, you know, Puerto Rico uh, has always kind of, uh, uh, under circumstances in the last few years with natural disasters, have kind of been pushed aside wrongfully. Um, and we need to figure out how we can, as the city of Brockton, help. Um, I'm up for any suggestions, any offers. I know Mike is from the schools as well. Um, but, you know, we won't look a blind eye. I just don't have an answer, Angel, right now on what exactly we can do to affect positive change to help people that are really being hurt right now. So I'd love, before you, know, you leave, I'd love to sit down or just talk briefly about your thoughts and we can have a follow-up conversation tomorrow. But um, we need to, we also need to look at, um, like the Latino Women's Associations here, and I know Inez is there and, and her daughter, and, and you know, we have to figure out best practices going forward to really benefit um, not just people that live in Brockton, but people that have loved ones outside of Brockton. I mean, that's, that's, that's the compassionate approach that the way I was raised. Thank you. Good evening. Hi, good Hi. evening. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yes, glad to be here and um, congratulations. Well, thank you. Alrighty, so now um, I'm gonna articulate this because I wanna tweak it. I am a president and founder of NOW, the Diverse Initiatives Neighborhood Association. Originated as a resident or a single parent, uh, now raising a, a grandchild full custody. 
and um, living in the hard knocks of Brockton, dealing with the reality and the real issues after dark, the areas where people fray from businesses and city hall to go to, because the north side, my area is Ward 2. I've lived for many years on Haverhill, on Wyman, now on Huntington for a decade. And um, my mission began naturally, but it was hardly impacted because there's many issues in the city of Brockton. My daughter became a victim at the age of 12 while I was working at a mental health facility. And her becoming a victim was something that happened that only I, in my faith, which I'm led by spirit first, and my faith is in the Lord, that he can heal. But I ventured out into the city of Brockton because for me, as in my intrigue in psychology, and to understand the brokenness and the barriers from the racial discrepancies to the biases, to the indifferences, to the federal public level guideline, to all of the above that I just wanted to just explore. And in my explorations, I don't believe in being um, anxious for anything. I believe in taking time to understand. And I met you during um, Brockton United when they had the ordinance, and it may not have ended well, but, I, but at the same time, it did. And it took mere understanding for one to realize that when we have a passion and we have a vision in the city, within our neighborhoods, and sometimes we may not get the results, but it doesn't end there. So I established this association under the um, team resident leadership mm -hmm. because I became that resident, I became that parent, and I went to the Brockton Public Library, respectively now, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a poet, um, creative host, under Paul's uh, Angle's directorship, and Philip Pesaurus. And um, yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, let's, we, uh, let's give a clap. Yes, for because Thank creative, creative arts is important. And I'm going to go back there because um, not only that, I mean, you see my coat. It says Clean Harbors. I'm an environmental corporate planner covering America 40 hours a week. And my grandson is a, I pay full tuition for Trinity Catholic out of my pocket as a single uh, grandparent. And my children are raised five in the city of Brockton single-handedly. And during all these afflictions, I've encountered interactions with the police, with the EMTs, with the school department. I also encountered um, situations where I have every reason to be in opposition, but I said, miscommunication, broken areas, the only way to rebuild and have community healings is being one setting the example to speak on various entities. Alex Cosmides ran for city council at large. And the way I look at it, you may not have won this election. Everybody who won this election, now, Ali's around. Let's see what happens on the next election, because I'm going to hold you to your position. Sorry, I like to bring humor. But anyways, um, Alex now and Eileen Veitlin from Smith Law Group, who there was the campaign manager for Kevin Borges, is my executive director. That's respectable to me. To be able to be in a community and have high respect by many people from just becoming a parent in a neighborhood, trying to do the best to fight crime myself. I stood up against gang people. I did not find the support adequate with the um, criminal system here in Brockton. But I decided to join Operation Safe Street meetings. Now we had um, impacted and going to have a relationship in um, future Cummins meetings to talk about our concerns. But where I'm getting at it with this is there are many people, you just coming on board as, as a mayor, You've been around, though, and I respect that. That's, where, that's why my vote went in your ballot. Thank I you. love Jimmy Pereira, Thank you, you know? And the reason why I say that, I say that passionately. I said, because I believe that as an independent person, I am not led by my color, by my gender, by my faith. I am led by faith, by spirit, but I'm talking about religious purposes. I'm not <laughs> led and moved by just anyone. I listen to the people, beginning with the youth. I listen to the cries. I also see that people in power can only cover so much. There are good, there are bad, there are challenges in all areas. We cannot be there and cover it all, but together it is time for a level of accountability That's right. to be taken place. That's right. And I understand that many changes have come abroad. abroad. You are doing, you're, you are, now, moving forward as the engineer for our city. Shirley Azak and I go back two decades. Kitty Haven, yes, I was an early childhood educator. It, I, um, 
congratulations. You being a president, it's well earned. You earned it. And that is, this is very important for anyone who seeks to run in the future, anyone who seeks to lead, you have to start somewhere. That's right. Not just to show the people, but to show the people and have the people trust who you are. And with that being said, I have George, George over here who is chuckling. And I'm going to call him up because he has concerns. I've met him as passionate. I don't want him to be discouraged because I myself, when I was 15, I'm born in Cambridge. My first job was at the Cambridge Police Department. We have community policing programs, programs that work with the, with the youth in the actual police department. And I myself am a witness because I don't understand how a child victim of rape becomes now criminalized in the pipeline system because there's lack of education and awareness in mental health. That is future upcoming. So where I'm at right now, and I'm gonna narrow it down and close it, respectively stated, we're talking about restaurants, we're talking about a lot of changes. Heidi, Heidi's place, Alex's mom, she's moving on. That's a memorable, that's a memorable place. It may be owned by a great new owner for the next years, but that's something that is part of our city and that's our right. community. And Joshi over here, he's a youth, he's a, um, a young adult. He works for Mass Hire. He is now the en youth engagement specialist of Dina. Sam Chenet mm -hmm. of the Spot Bar Lounge. Mm -hmm. And I went to Sam, I said, do you got a place for me up in here? He was like, Ali, come talk to me. Because I met through Latin, Women's Association Inez. That's my Boricua mom. I'm mixed Hispanic, Dominican, and Salvadorian. It is important. Because yeah. Because you want to know something, sorry, it is important because you want to know something. If I didn't have people who showed me that cared and um, I didn't meet the people that I did, with my faith alone, not just God, but the people who showed that little bit of inch of care made me say, I believe I can and I believe I can lead us together, not as a leader, but in saying that you also have leadership in you. And if we can collaborate and work together, then we will succeed and that bridge will be sealed and we can cross over. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, thank you for what you do and thank you for what you said. I think a couple things are really important in terms of you said being a good listener. And what I've learned over the years is you have much more well-formed decisions if you listen, if you listen, and you listen to everybody. Um, you know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm driven by faith. I'm a Catholic. I go to church every, every Sunday in the Tri-Parish of Lady of Lords, but it doesn't matter what religion you are. I invited 15 clergy to the uh, inauguration, um, 15 um, from all different um, diverse religions, um, from Muslim to Jewish to Catholic to Christian. I just thought it was the right thing to do. I'm also having um, twice a month prayer sessions at City Hall. Uh, that's just me personally. That's just me personally. I mean, not reflection on anything, but it, it helps me and it also helps me connect with what the clergy and the pastors are hearing from their parishioners. I think that that's a healthy discussion. It's something that I can learn from. Um, I, I, I do think when you look at a business such as Heidi's Place, um, or if you look at um, Sorelli Foods that was here forever and they left Brockton, um, or even Christos, you know, yeah. the sad things um, that happen. I mean, um, you know, changes happen, right? But ultimately, we have to try to figure out the best way to take care of businesses that are here, make sure that the mom and pops that are here stay here, and also try to attract new, new businesses, you know, and, and work together. And I do thank you if you support and you vote. And again, anybody that's run for office should be applauded, applauded because you're doing it for the right reasons to better the community. And if you lose, that's okay. There's always another day. We learn from our mistakes. I lost state rep twice when I ran, you know? Mike Brady beat me in 2008, 12 years ago. You know, I was a little thinner. He had more dark hair. But Mike's gone on to the state representative and now a senator, you know? I lost in 2012 to Claire Cronin. Claire's a great state rep. In the history of the Commonwealth, she's the only woman chair of judiciary. And now I'm the mayor. Things happen. We become friends. We learn from these. Richard Sergi, the late Dick Sergi, who was the executive director of the Housing Authority, had always said to me, listen, Bob, you add to your base, you never subtract. 
You think about that. You add to your base. You know, you turn the page. You win, you lose. It's like sports, right? But you always understand that you're running to better home, Brockton. So thank you for what you're doing. Um, I'd love to have a meeting with you. Um, you know, one thing that I'm really proud, and I want to say this, and I want to hear from each and every one of you, is when some mayors come in um, to office, they wipe out everybody that worked for the previous mayor. A clean slate. I didn't do that, you know. Bill Carpenter hired some great people. You know, Moses was there. My view is this. I want to surround myself with people, first of all, that have the same belief and vision I do. I've said this, right? Same, same moral compass, but also institutional knowledge. You know, so Marcy and Joe and Kim right there, you know, they served under Mayor Carpenter, Mayor Moses, and now Mayor Sullivan, you know. And, and again, nothing about people that didn't stay on, but we also want to add to the team. Um, I'm actively looking for communications director. I'm actively looking for a policy into government affairs director. Never existed for any mayor. I think it needs to exist, and it's going to exist under my administration. So again, I, I just... This is a healthy conversation. It's not a one-off. We need to continue the dialogue. We need to add, this is a good turn up, but I want to see this place packed. Think about when Jimmy and myself and Gene and, and Mr. Lawton and, and Karina uh, and the bishop was running, right? And I know Phyllis Ellis is here, NAACP had a wonderful candidates forum debate. This joint was jamming. It was packed. We had people in the rafters. So that's what we need to do, right? We need to continue to add and add and add. But one thing that was brought up over there is, is, and I forget the gentleman that said it, but in terms of looking at nonprofits or social service agencies, and my good friend Laura Streis, who works for the Charity Guild here tonight, and she just does yeoman's work to better Brockton, she's come up with some great ideas. You know, she was making a difference in Manhattan. Brockton's home, she came back to be with her family. She's making a difference, right? If you go to the Charity Guild, there's a difference there. But she's come up with some ideas about creating alliances and building relationship and coalition, like you said, collaboration, right? That's how we succeed to better Brockton. So, sir. I'm sorry, Mr. Fontaine. Fred, how are you? Very good, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Sullivan. And uh, my question will be simple, because uh, I think it's a long night for you. <laughs> because, you know, seriously, that's a long night, and I do realize that's a lot of questions you, you got to answer. Uh, as a businessman in the south, shore, uh, on the south side of Brockton, I'm talking about the perfect place yes. right on the south side of Brockton, there's a lot of concern about the way the south side of Brockton is really going down. Do you have a plan, or you do have people who have a plan to really help out on the South Shore, on the yes, South Side of yeah, Brockton. And thank Sorry. you for your investment in that area. Perfect place is a great place. I've been there. I've had fundraisers there. It's great. Thank you, Fred. So I, again, I said earlier I had a luncheon today and I cheated on my diet and I went to the cod and had some pizza. But the Campello Business Association was there. And um, Council Nicastro and Consignary couldn't make it today, um, but they're always there. Um, and again, what was articulated to me right there by the business people, there's a new business guy that came in, um, and he's going to run, a, he is running a business uh, on Main Street downtown. Um, the, the old Lincoln Champion has been acquired by a gentleman from Quincy that runs a um, cab service, livery service. Um, Pastor E, who runs a religious uh, congregation, has acquired the CVS down there. You know, we still have some anchor tenants, Maui's still down there. Um, but when you talk about Kmart, Fred, and how it's a vacant entity right now. That's exactly what I was gonna ask you. Yeah. What about the Kmart Plaza? What are you guys gonna do? The Kmart is no longer exists. Right, and I know Councilman Castro has been talking to the owner of that complex um, over and over and over again to figure out best practices and get something there. I said it before, we can't keep affording to having vacant properties in Brockton. That's an area that needs to be addressed. The Shaw's, again, a portion of the Shaw's, the old Shaw's building is in Brockton, the other is in West Bridgewater. There is going to be a business going there, Fred, the old Shaw's. It's not going to be a supermarket. It's going to be um, much like an Avon trampoline park for children. It's going there. Uh, again, a portion of that is in Brockton, to pay taxes to Brockton. Um, I will say that the four councils at large, and Councilor Nicastro working diligently. I'm a former councilor at large 14 years. We have a master plan. We have to figure out how to execute that plan. We want to get businesses there, but we also want to have good businesses there, productive, 
taxpaying businesses that bring jobs for Brocktonians. So again, don't forget, I mean, don't think that you're being forgotten down there. We appreciate your investment. Um, we just have to figure out collectively, working with Rob May, our planner and our economic advisor, how we can maximize that area. So again, it's on my radar. It won't be forgotten, and we'll figure out how to get it there. We really will, Fred. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Mr. Mayor and uh, everyone here, I believe we have something in common else we wouldn't be here. The fact that we've come here this evening to hear ideas and to bring ideas. So I feel really privileged to be here because Allie asked me to be the closer for a group. We have a group that's gotten together. In fact, the first time I met you was on a rainy Sunday when we were giving away 184 turkeys. turkeys. That's right. In fact, it wasn't a rainy Sunday. <laughs> I think it was a monsoon. But, uh, <laughs> and I've had the great fortune and the opportunity to work with others that are here, council people, area, politicians, and what I have is a 501c3 nonprofit that I would love to get into the Brockton Public Schools. It's an academic athletic program. And I reason, the reason I say academics, because that's first and foremost. There are thousands more academic scholarships given out than there are athletic scholarships. If you're blessed enough to have both, and we can focus and help our kids to secure both, I've reached out before, and I will continue to do so to try to have my program operate out of Brockton. Another reason Ali asked me to close was because community is the only way that we can have safe streets as your neighbor across the street from you has put forth that until we can actually say it's safe, it's clean, it's a nice place to be, the marketing is only the hype. And as a lot of us probably know, we grew up on a song that said, don't believe the hype. And we need to take that into account as to what we really do, because if we're gonna be legit, and we need to be legit right across the board. We all want to sit at the table at some time so we can be heard. But the table's not big enough for all of us. But we can still bring from what you told me on that monsoon, it was a monsoon. Sunday yeah. that we met, that you said you have an open door policy. Nope. And I believe a lot of us are looking forward to coming up to that door if it's really open to express to you what we want Brockton to be. You have an opportunity to be a groundbreaker. And let's see if you have the cojones to be the groundbreaker. Because that's what's needed to change Brockton. Brockton has got to change. All the things that we talk about, everything we've heard this evening is legit else we wouldn't be here. And we say community, something that I've thought about for two years now, and I didn't go to the last Safe Streets meeting because I said, what the frack? You know, community to me means community policing. Community policing is something that takes place in Boston and in Cambridge, and I've spoken to and made phone calls to their programs that they have in the summertime that they have youngsters who are paid to be part of the police to see if that's something they want to be. Because if we can look out in the streets and our 15 and 16 year olds see one of their running buddies, hey man, this summer I'm working in conjunction with, then maybe that 15 or 16 year old says, I want to go into the police force. Maybe I want to go into law enforcement. Maybe I want to get my degree to be a lawyer and to push it forward. Because if it's a community, it's got to start with our young people. Because if it doesn't start there, then it's just BS. 
And I think everybody here recognizes that, that because sometimes you cross the street when you see three or four youngsters coming down the same side of the street. We talk about downtown. Maybe if we can push to get even a small movie theater on Main Street, then we have traffic on Main Street. I mean, there are lots of things that everybody's got ideas to do, but like I said, everybody would like to sit at the table one time or another to express themselves. And as I said, Allie asked me to be the closer this evening. I don't know why, because she does a fine job in what she's doing. But the opportunity to come up and to be part of the community and to express myself, my hands are not sweating anymore, so I'm OK. I appreciate your time, and God bless. Thank you. So that's a great example, right, of someone that's taken time out of their life to come here to express it, right? We all speak from the heart. Um, I said that during the campaign, and I mean that. I have an open door policy. I do. Um, all, all my team in the office can attest to that. Um, John Messia, who is um, my constituent services director here in the front row, um, will, will welcome anybody. He'll give you his card tonight, facilitate it, come and meet with me. As I said to my wife, um, there's not enough time in the day right now um, for me personally, because I, I want to get this right. Um, we really only have one shot at getting it right, but we are going to get it right, rest assured, as long as I'm at City Hall. It's going to happen. It's going to happen the right way, making sure people feel proud of the city of Brockton, safe, right? Perception's reality, making sure community placing does happen. One thing that Moses did when he was mayor, and I was the council president mayor elect, is we came up here. We were in that room over there, Vinnie McCrina's room. We met with 9th, 10th, 11th, and 1 12th grader. And I said to the 80 kids, is there anybody here that would like to intern in my office when I'm the mayor of Brockton? 12 boys and girls raised their hand. It's never happened. I went to Cardinal Spellman just last week, did the same thing. I'm going to do it at Southeastern. It's the boys and girls that I want to help as an elected official. Because when I went to Brockton High and I went on to Boston College, that's what triggered my interest in giving back to public service and running for local office, right? You gotta have the opportunity and the chance. Not everybody's become a lawyer or a city councilor or mayor. You know, the trades are a great profession. I was endorsed during the campaign by many labor organizations and what I learned that if a young boy and girl wants to join the carpenters or the electricians or Brockton building trades, there's an opportunity to get a degree at Wentworth University in Boston one with technology, yep. that's a win-win. You're making a good pay, you're getting a good trade, you can get an education on their dime. We need to market that. I know Mike Thomas, the superintendent, is, is stressing that. Not everybody goes on to a four-year school. You know, We have to realize that. And again, sir, I, I, I said that I, when I saw you in that monsoon, and it was a monsoon, I do have an open door policy, and that's for everybody here. It's gonna be on Facebook and social media. If you were gonna take the time to call me or visit me, I'm gonna meet with you. And that's how we're going to take it to the next level. We really are. Ellie. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, Mayor Sullivan. You can call me Bob. Just Bob Thank from Brockton. Bob. That's who I am. <laughs> um, there's so many good things that have been said tonight. So I don't want to take too much time. We have a little time and still more speakers. But um, one of the things I think that is extremely important, just from listening to many meetings, is that people just don't know how many things are going on in the city, how many great things. The first place I want to recognize, because I see Paul Engel here, is the Brockton Public Library. Yep. Yep. There is so much stuff going on there that's free. That is absolutely free. So much information on their site. So many things for your children and adults. I just, uh, my husband uh, and my two daughters who are from way uh, far away from Brockton, came down for the Art from the Hearts um, presentation that was put on at the Art Library. They're always doing things. We, I used to teach ESL as a second language. I was, did it for six years. And the Brockton Library, you weren't there then, Paul, but you are now. Um, we volunteered with Ruth Denley O'Brien. And uh, it was wonderful. Never charged us anything. Always put up with us whatever our problems were. But the city itself does not have a great website. I go on it often. I can go look at the assessor's office. I can go look up codes. But as far as the events 
many years ago. You've been, you're old enough now, you're younger than my younger son, but you've been here long enough to remember that was our biggest complaint. Why can't we get everybody who's having an event to, to notify the office and put it on the website? Now, I had asked that question of somebody from City Hall, and they had, not when you, not when you were in an office, but um, said that, well, you know, it takes so much time, you've got to get approval and this and that. That's it doesn't. No. I use computers all yeah, the time. It's unacceptable. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's right. And many times we get or had gotten unacceptable answers that discourage people. But the website is instrumental in bringing us all together and have it in many languages. But um, I just want to... Uh, agree so much with so many th people who have said teamwork. And we really do have to work at, as teams. And there are many teams. There are too many organizations, there are too many storefronts going on in the city that are competing with each other. I see everyone who's ever got any kind of a social service degree putting their, their shingle up. And the people who, you know, it's just too many are begging for services. Um, I attend the Chenar meetings, uh, the uh, Community Health Network Association, and it's wonderful because we can go and we can meet each other, but that's how I know there's just so many different individual little uh, nonprofits, but and they don't pay tax. Mm. So anyway, um, the other thing I wanted to mention uh, was uh, the um, Community uh, safe, safe Streets meetings. They are very poorly attended. But when I hear people talking about the state police, I think the gentleman over there, Mr. Wynn, is it, didn't know about the state police. We have to educate ourselves. We have to go online. We have to go to meetings. And the other thing is we have got to get the Brockton Enterprise to be a better paper. I still, I still have it. I've lived here for 52 years, and I still have it. I finally went digital for $100 a year. If we get more people signing up, read the paper. The events section is two pages a week on Thursdays, I believe. It has the prices that people have uh, sold their houses for. You can know what your house is going to go for. And you can know who your neighbors are. I run a neighborhood watch. And uh, every time a new person buys a house, I uh, send them a card or something. The people on my street, I dropped off flowers, I dropped off a, a cake, um, welcome neighbor. Mm -hmm. You know, I know what their names are because I read it in the paper. But um, we've got to get together. And I want to just comment on our youth because when I heard someone say they may cross the street because they see three teenagers, don't do that. When I walk, when I have the ambition or the, the health to walk, um, I love walking. And um, I say hello, good morning, with a smile on my face. Be a good neighbor. Be a good neighbor. Be a good walker. Be a good shopper. You go to Market Basket. One thing I really love about the immigrant community, they all smile. They all sigh. A lot of them talk to themselves, too. We're not quite used to that. Or, or sing to themselves. I love it. I love the different music. We have so much. There's so much richness here. And we've got to just accept each other. Stop making excuses for this or for that, or, or you guys did that, or you guys did that. And it's not white against black. It used to be Haitians and, and, and Cape Verdeans. Back when I was a kid, it was Irish and Italians. This is life. This is the way we are. So let's pull ourselves together. And let's really, really build this city up, because it's a wonderful place to be, a wonderful place. My husband, you know. Uh, he couldn't believe the library. My two daughters couldn't believe how beautiful it was. And I don't know if ever, anybody's ever gone up to the second floor and seen those great artworks yep. that were uh, uh, done many years ago. But um, uh, when I was coming up here, there were three young men, teenagers, school kids, coming up to me. And I said, isn't that wonderful that they're coming up? And they were black boys, by the way, and just, just so people know, just so our white people know that. Um, and the three of them went in the door, and I'm saying, so, geez, I wonder if they'll bother to hold the door. Well, the first, the second, the third, and the, the third one almost closed it, but he turned around and looked and opened the door for me. 
But that's the kind of young people we have in this city. And we've got to recognize, we've got to stop accentuating all the bad stuff mm -hmm. and the bad kids. Right. One rotten apple spoils the whole bunch, and that's what's happened to our that's city. Right. Speak right. up for it. Tell people how good it is here and what wonderful people we have. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> John, Hi, wait folks. a second, John. I'm uh, Constituent Director John Messier. I know that it's 8 o'clock. I applaud everybody. We do want to hear from the last few people, so we're going to ask the mayor if he'll extend just a few moments. You can leave if you'd like. We encourage you to stay. We're going to go to the one-minute format just so that we don't carry on and uh, stay here all night. So we are going to go to the one-minute format, okay? Thank, thank you, you, John. And, and John's a Marine, and thank you, John, for your service to our nation as well. Thank you. Um, just before I, I and I, yeah, I'll stay as long as you want me, but for Ellie, um, I'll have a meeting tomorrow with Bill Santos, who's the IT director. Uh, it's unacceptable um, that we don't have, we spent 80 grand, um, previous administration spent 80 grand on the website. Um, we need to do a better job, again, capturing different aspects of Brockton, different events. It needs to be done. Department heads know I'm going to be mentioning it to Mr. Santos tomorrow, so thank you for that. Good evening, Sharon. How are you? Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. First and foremost, I want to congratulate everybody. Welcome to what you're doing and what we're about to do here in the city of Brockton. I have two organizations here in the city of Brockton. My son was murdered here in the city of Brockton and also my nephew um, for senseless reasons, uh, for people coming out of the town from other towns and just doing what they do. And I mean, these two were good boys. Um, I stand before you today to let you know that life after death is here. I stand before you today to let you know that I started the first Father's Day Peace Walk last year, um, and it was successful. And in my head, I thought, <laughs> in my head, on the flip side, I have a son incarcerated. And I said, you know, if we can get these people out, uh, Tina Cherry, I do a lot of work in Boston, is my mentor, and I said, so if she's doing the Mother's Day Peace Walk, let's get a Father's Day Peace Walk. Why? Because if the fathers play uh, a role and get out of their selves and start looking to their children, um, maybe my son wouldn't be in jail today. Um, so we're having a second one, Father's Day. I work closely with uh, the district attorney's office, Patrick Nevins. I've been working with uh, Representative Cronin, Rep. Cassidy. Um, when I went to Boston, I, helped, I got my son's testimony, was one of the testimonies that got the law passed um, for the new laws. Um, if my child was a drug dealer, if he was um, a gangbanger or whatever. So now, even if they are and someone dies, doesn't matter, you still have to get paid. I went up against the uh, victim attorneys because I wasn't, I didn't get any compensation for my son. And they were saying that my son was a drug dealer. No, not that son, was a good boy, he was in school, he did what he had to do, and for whatever reason, God took him. My nephew, a good boy. So I am a Leon, uh, uh, liaison, liaison here in the city of Brockton. I am a certified advocate for anyone when they get murdered here in the city of Brockton that they call me up at nine o'clock or whatever and say someone's got shot. I will go to them and I will meet with these people because I'm still in mourning for my child. Tomorrow is his birthday. He'll be, he was 23 when he got murdered and the murderers got set free. So who killed my son? Um, I'm, not, I'm not angry, but we have to do better. Um, I piggyback off everything that everyone's saying. You know, we gotta pay attention to who's coming into our city, you know, because they're coming. The rent's going up in Boston, and they're coming. So we have to pay attention. And when I first met the mayor, one of my questions was, what are you gonna do if you become mayor? And you told me exactly what you were gonna do, and this, thus far, I've seen it with my two eyes. I commend you, and I'm looking up to you. I'm looking up to you people. Um, the school committee, the football teams, my grandsons um, on the Brockton 
radars, radars. And he went to New Jersey. He made it to the FBU or whatever it is. And we need um, some programs for these parents because my daughter had to have a bad Christmas because my grandson had to go to Jersey and he had to go to the FBU and they came in second place, okay? So we need uh, a program for these youth, for the parents that are, my daughter's a single, a single mother, that the parents that need money, she had to drive there and drive back, I couldn't go. I had to work, and then when she got back, I had to help her. So everything that everyone's saying in this room, we do have numbers of um, events going on. Um, there's this, there's that. Collaboration is the key. Right. There's no big U's and no little me's, and we can all sit at the table and eat. And I thank you for listening, everyone. Please, I have meetings <laughs> for the women for the parents that are suffering in silence. Um, we're looking for a peace guide in here in the city, Representative Cronin, Rep uh, Cassidy, um, the DA's office. We're bringing, we're sitting at the table um, next week to bring a trauma team because Brockton Hospital is where third trauma. So when someone gets, they have to go all the way to Boston. We need a trauma team here in the city of Brockton. So we're working on that, and thank you for listening, and I look forward to working with everyone. Thanks, and have a good night. Sharon, we're uh, extremely sorry about your losses, and um, you do really wonderful things in Brockton. I've had many conversations with you. Um, you're a caring, loving person, and, and you're what is Brockton's about. And through your tragic losses, you're building upon it to help people. Um, in terms of incarceration, we have an individual in the mayor's office, Jim Frazier, who's helping uh, three times a week in my office, um, reentry. And when I came into the office, I noticed that Jim was in the front of the office talking to these men that have just gotten out. No privacy whatsoever. I said, hold it. Jim, you're going to go in the back of the office. We're going to be able to shut the door. Respect and courtesy to these individuals. Um, so again, through the sheriff, Joe McDonald, we have Jim. Um, and again, I have a good working relationship with the DA. I'd love to get involved with the Peace Garden as well. It's all powers and numbers. And, uh, and again, thank you. And I'm so sorry for your losses. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor, my name is Eugenie Kavna, and I'm a resident, been here for five years. I am a 13-year veteran with two boys that are in the public school system. Um, for me, since I moved here, my question to you is for, and for those that people of color have been seeing the changes that are coming into Brockton. We started to see businesses come opening and soon to be business that are about to open, as well as housing. So my question is to you, to reassure those that, the people that are of color, what what affordable housing and job opportunities can you create in reassuring us that we still have a home here and still opportunities that what you're building is for us as well? Yeah, and thank you for being here. Five That's years. one question. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have Keep another going. question, too. I... It's more so for the chief of police. I'm not too sure if he's here. He's not. But, okay, so if um, it can go to you as well. For those um, that are undocumented that are facing domestic violence, how can the police protect them from their abuser and find a way to cope with this, knowing that they are, are undocumented and possibility being deported. Thank you. Um, first of all, thanks for coming to Brockton. Thank Stay you. in Brockton. We want you here in Brockton. Don't leave Brockton. Uh, I'm a dad of three kids myself. My son, 12, is Tommy. My daughter, Grace, is 10, and my youngest, Will, is seven. Um, so I have a lot of concerns. I don't see white, black, gay, straight, young, old. I don't see that. That's not how I was brought up. But I realize that certain people in Brockton that come to Brockton feel that they're treated differently, feel like they don't have a voice. Um, I'm gonna be a mayor of everybody, and if that's naive, well then I'm naive because that's how I feel it. I feel that we, Brocktonians, need to do better for Brocktonians. Um, I don't wanna see people leave Brockton. When I graduated here from 88 and I went to BC, most of my friends that graduated didn't come back to Brockton. My wife and I did. In terms of affordable housing, um, right now, we're seeing Brockton, first of all, the 40B standard of affordable housing doesn't apply to Brockton. We have the Housing Authority here in Brockton, which meets, meets the criteria under the law. Um, 
Chapter 40R, Smart Growth Zoning, um, which was adopted by the City Council. That's why Trinity Financial invested $30 million downtown. Um, there's a component under the law that has to be affordable. But what we're seeing, and Kerry, my Chief of Staff, I, I said it before she moved to Brockton, 75 Commercial Street, new development, right near the uh, Rocky Marciano Post Office. Um, it's, it's a market rate. Um, but I never want to see Brockton people leave Brockton. So we need to figure out, again, do I have all the answers? No, but I've had meetings with Tom Tebow. I've had sit-downs with Senator, United States Senator Ed Markey. I've had sit-down meetings with Congressman Stephen Lynch. Um, and it's the local level, in terms of the elected officials, that really determine the future of Brockton. We can talk about the feds or the great state reps that we have, and Jerry and Claire and Michelle and Mike, they bring the home, the money for Brockton, and then we have to decide how to spend that money. But what I do know is, as long as a mayor, you're always going to have a friend and a voice for everybody uh, at City Hall. Can we do better? Absolutely. And all the department heads have heard me say this. The days of people passing the buck is over. The day of someone saying to Ellie, oh, we can't do that, is over. Okay? It, there's a new day coming. It's a reckoning. Either you're on the train or you're off the train. I want everybody on the train. But rest assured, I am who I am. Someone said you might have, not have the cojones. You don't know me. You don't know me. Uh, I do, believe it or not. Believe me, I do. Um, but this is the way I look at it. In terms of domestic violence, if you're an undocumented, and I'm not law enforcement, never have been. My sister's an assistant U.S. attorney from the feds. Um, you know, I have two cousins that are state police. All I can say is when we were vetting out the United Ordinance, people called it a sanctuary city. It wasn't. That was a lie. That was a marketing ploy. It was a bunch of BS. But what I can say this is what we were told by District Attorney Tim Cruz and the police chief is that they are not actively calling ICE. Um, but I do know, because I've had meetings with women that are battered, that of taking the blows from the domestic partners because they don't want to run the risk of potentially being that one that's going to be deported. Um, that's wrong. It's, it's just wrong. Um, so I'm having a meeting Friday at 8.30 with DA Tim Cruz. I don't have an answer on how we do it. All I know is it needs to be done. People need to feel safe at home. Um, people need to feel safe in the schools. That's why Mike is having uh, security systems there. When my three kids go to school, um, two of my kids go to Brockton Public Schools, Hancock and Angelo. My oldest goes to Trinity Catholic Academy. Um, I expect that when I drop them off that I'm going to pick them up. Um, but we know from Newtown that tragedies happen. But we need to work, and that's why Brockton PD is, is doing um, shooting incidents on a regular basis, thanks to the school committee that are affording that. And Mike, um, you know, all I know is this. I'm going to be a mayor to try to make a difference in Brockton because I love Brockton, and it's home. I don't have every answer, um, but I can tell you truthfully and look you in the eye right now that if I don't have the answer, I need to figure out how we get that answer. And we will get that answer. Um, it might not be tomorrow or the next day, but it's coming. So I'd love to, to share information and we can have further discussions. Thank you again for being here. <laughs> Sir, good evening. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Jamal Brathwaite. Hey, Jamal. Hello, and I'm a resident here in Brockton. I want to thank you so much for hosting this forum. Uh, since I live in Brockton, I don't think we've ever had such a forum before. Um, I lead a group of um, residents and homeowners in Ward 6, where we seek to improve our community. The question I had is, is there a plan to improve the roads in the city of Brockton? Yes. Has, has there ever been an, a DPW assessment and feasibility study completed to determine how much it costs to improve the roads? They, they, thank you, Jamal, and, and I know um, you've reached out to my office, uh, and I know Representative Dubois is trying to help you on your own personal matter, and I, I'd love to help you as well. Um, in terms of the roads, and Larry Rowley's here as well, um, the Ward Councilor Jack Lally has done an unbelievable job of adopting private ways to public roads acceptance, street acceptance. Um, every year through Mr. Rowley, Commissioner Rowley's office, the ward councilors and at-large are allowed to put streets forward um, relative to paving and enhancements and improvements. 
So we all know, and Jerry and Claire and, and Michelle and Mike know this, you know, we get our Chapter 70 funds, we get our Chapter 90 funds. Chapter 70 is on the school side, Chapter 90 is on our infrastructure. Um, we are being shortchanged, Brockton is being shortchanged at Chapter 90 in terms of we don't need to, under the law, maintain private ways, right? There's some cities and towns in Brockton that say, hey, if you live on a private way, you hire a plow, you plow it. You hire rubbish, private rubbish, pick up. Brockton's never done that. If you live on a private way, Brockton, and you're paying taxes, Brockton's gonna take care of you. But in terms of what Council Lally is doing is, and Tim Cruz has done this in one, um, my own street was a private way, and, and that got changed to public, and I'm happy that it did, um, but it doesn't change much. Um, has there ever been an in-depth analysis? I don't know about that um, in terms of the dollar, Larry. I don't know if you can opine on that. Um, Commission, do you have any? Do, do we have a, a cost analysis on what it would cost? I mean, it'd be astronomical, but it would... $60 million is an estimate to do every street in the city of Brockton. How many, how many miles of roadways are there? 300 miles of roadways in Brockton. Okay, so, all right, thank you. Um, first of all, that's the first time I've ever, I've, but for the record, so I've lived in Brockton for three years, and for the past two and a half years, I've called up the city, uh, city offices very regularly, uh, so much so that everybody knows me at the building department, the DPW, the planning department, and I'm asking them questions. And the first question was, yeah, how much money is needed? And now I appreciate you gave me the value of $600 million, but let me just establish a threshold. I think of it was I'm, $60 million, correct? Six zero? 60. 60 million. Okay, so $60 million to improve all the roads in Brockton. Now, so here's the threshold that I'm looking for. Now, before moving to Brockton, I resided in Quincy, where I paid maybe $100 per month for insurance. Now, since moving to Brockton, I now pay 250 and it, for some people maybe that's not considered too much, but that's $150 premium associated with just living in Brockton. So then I contacted seven different insurance companies to get seven different quotes to find out why is that? And every single insurance company consistently told me that there is a premium associated with Brockton associated with the roads in their current conditions. So the question I want to ask is how much is it going to cost to improve the city roads to the point where there isn't that kind of uh, premium associated with living in Brockton. And just let me just add a little bit more on the computation. So I estimate we have at least 50,000 cars that are insured in the city of Brockton. And if each person's paying at least $100 extra per month, that's a $5 million premium we're paying on average for, the, for, for per year. And uh, so taking that in consideration, I want the premium to be eliminated. I think that we should you know, prioritize uh, the improvement of the roads, and I like to know, I appreciate there's a long list of priorities you have, and everyone's laid it out, and I think it's all achievable, but I like to know where do the improvement of the roads stand for you on that list of priorities? Well, first of all, I want to thank you for moving from the city of Presidents Quincy to the city of Champions Brockton, because we always trump the president, so I want to thank you for moving here. In terms of my priorities, um, my priorities have been laid out in multitudes. I want a safe city, I want a clean city, I want an economic thriving city, I want to have a, a public school system that's paramount, and we're on the track to do that. In terms of um, insurance premiums and the like, um, I've never heard that. Um, what I did hear um, when I first got my license many years ago is that the Westgate Mall was the number one auto theft in the nation. So if you lived in Brockton, your insurance premiums were high because of that. That's what we were told. It could have been a bunch of hogwash. I don't know. But in terms of what you're saying, that insurance, seven insurance companies are telling you because you live in Brockton and the condition of the current roads are creating premium increases, I've never heard of that. I do know that the CFO, um, Mr. Claxon, has requested through every department to do a capital plan project to figure out a cost analysis. It's going to be astronomical. That's going to be incorporated in there as well. But I'll look you in the eye and the same thing. It's not going to happen overnight. There's no way we have 60 million bucks to spend. One thing that we have to spend on is money here at Brockton High School. The new Brockton High is 50 years old, and we're going to do that in phases. And it was just approved the other night in terms of the school committee, and it will come before the city council. So um, my priorities are, are laid out, um, but I do recognize what you're saying. I've heard it before. Um, there's certain potholes that create damage to cars. I do know the C-click fix 
um, Endeavor on our website is actively used. I know that Larry Rowley, uh, as the commissioner, and his crew addressing that. We also have to figure out, you know, when the repairs are done versus the frost heave. Um, so again, typically repairs are done. There's patchwork done in the winter months. Um, spring and summer is when it's really going to be instituted. So, you know, Mayor Carpenter, before he passed, did a portion of Copeland Street was long overdue, and I applaud him for that. It's great, but we do have to look at priorities. Um, Belmont Street, Route 123, they call it the new Main Street. Um, you know, we need to address them, Jamal, uh, but we can't do it overnight. Noted. But one thing I'd like to ask is, can I get a promise tonight that we'll at least have these community forum meetings every quarter? to do an assessment. Yeah, so I, I will pledge you that. And if you know me um, as a city council president in 08, I had asked for quarterly meetings of all elected officials. And it lasted. And then it fizzled when I wasn't president. And then when I was the council at large after it fizzled, um, at that time, I believe it was um, uh, 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 Jay Stewart, right? Yourself when you were on then, right when? No, you weren't then. Oh, you know, it was Brophy, Petty, and, uh, and Stewart, and Sullivan. Those were the at larges. And since that time, it's been every quarter for Council Lodge. I will have this quarterly. If people want it more, we could do it more. But again, we need to get more people here to get more sharing of topics. So yes, and if you, if you call me, um, you know, we can meet as well. And John just gave you a thank you. Thanks for being here tonight. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. I know, I know we were supposed to stop at 8. It's almost 8.30. Um, I'd like to answer these two individuals if you don't mind you, um, you. and again if people have to leave I recognize it but thank you good evening good evening my name is Carla Toussaint um, so I've been living in Brockton after I migrated from Haiti and Brockton is my hometown I love Brockton but one of the things I've noticed um, and I do play a role as a community activist and an organizer I've noticed that a lot, if you look through the room and before people have left, there's not a lot of people in my age group that is represented here. And Carp Carpenter did a really great job in appointing me onto the board of the Cultural Council, where I kind of got out of the whole political scheme to look at the culture of Brockton. Um, so Mayor Sullivan, um, my question to you is, after finding out the diversity in my age group, in the entrepreneurships, in the talents and arts, what are you going to do to support the young entrepreneurs that are in the city? Because like you had said earlier, people will leave, go to college, and not come back. I left, I went to college, but Brockton, it has a tug at my heart, and I love the city, and I want to see the entrepreneurs in the city supported, especially the young millennials in the city. Yeah, I mean, we're at a strong disadvantage if people leave merely because of financial, right? I mean, I came out of Boston College with so much debt. I mean, I flipped burgers at the commissary to try to get through college, and then I went to law school and added to that debt, you know? Um, what I can pledge to you, Colin, we've had conversations before, um, we can't afford to educate and then lose people. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's a collaborative approach where we have to have best practices and roundtable discussions. And Mike and the school committee and city council concur with that as well. Um, but it's also outreach to your generation. Um, I still consider myself young at 50, <laughs> and my wife says, look in the mirror, you're not. Um, but I do know this. Um, Brockton is well served by bringing entrepreneurs here. If we can bring younger generation um, back and make sure they don't lose, it's a win-win for everybody. Um, but we also have to make sure that we give the opportunities. Um, you know, Back in the day, as we talked, it was shoe factories, right? And those days are gone. Um, but if we saw recent articles right now about the food industry in Brockton, right? Mm -hmm. And in terms of healthcare industry, we have, of course, Good Sam and Signature and the VA and Neighborhood Health Center. Um, but ultimately, where it comes down to is the services that we have to offer, city services and school services. And I think what the superintendent said, with the money that um, the state reps and the senator brought home. They finally brought home the bacon. They've been trying for years, and finally the state said yes. Um, the Webby case, the McDuffie case, and the Hancock case started in Brockton. I went to school with Robin Webby back in the day because Brockton was being shortchanged for inequity and funding formula for Brockton Public Schools. So I want to continue dialogue with your generation. Uh, if you let a 50-year-old old white guy at the table, I want to be there. But I do think this. I do think that if we don't continue to listen to your generation, we're going to lose your generation. But in the flip side, 
You need to educate us, work with us, and give us the guidance on how we attract. What are, what are the entrepreneurial businesses that you want to invest in, your generation wants to invest in? So you know? just to chime in on that, what I've noticed in the past, it's really important how we do outreach and how we get that information to our community. So I do hope your administration has the approach where it's not come to me, but we go to the people, because that's why I feel like has been an effective way that I've changed. I've worked as you know, an organizer for labor groups, faith-based groups, and community groups, and we worked on efforts to change how the earned sick time is, is spread out through our commonwealth, as well as the raising the minimum wage. And I realize it's, you have to bring this good, the good news to the people, so I hope this is the model that we're gonna take as approach to this community. Yeah, and I think, I think we need to, and that's why this is here, the community engagement. I and and that. a lot of people had said to me, Kyle, when I was running is, what does that even mean, community engagement? It's just a bunch of words. This is what it means. This is what it means, and it's gonna keep happening. So thank, thank you, you, thank so you for much what for you're your doing. Time. Thank you, good evening. Um, Mayor Sullivan, I just wanna say it's an honor to speak. Um, and just, it's, I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to give thanks to um, the officials on the stage and, and Sullivan and my man Jensen behind the camera. Um, and I just wanna say that I'm inspired by, you know, this is sort of a little self-reflection. Um, I graduated from Bridgewater State University um, in May of 2019. The Bears, the Bears. Yeah, they, once a bear, always a bear. Um, and uh, I just want to say I've, I've had a lot of development and growth, and I've met so many great people. Um, I interned uh, through the mayor's office, thanks to the lovely Mary Waldron. That's right there in the back. Um, yep, yep. Um, and I met so many great people, you know, Kim, Marcy, Joseph, um, Jeff Thompson, Rita, Jack. Um, and just, and just, there's plenty more to name a few, but this is sort of a self-reflection. Um, and ever since I graduated, I, you know, um, thanks to the lovely lady uh, Carla that was just speaking about uh, young entrepreneurs. And I feel like I've had that transition period to become a young entrepreneur myself. Um, Ali actually from the Dina Association just inspired me to speak. Um, because I represent Dina. I also represent the NAACP. Thank you, Phyllis. Um, Phyllis and, uh, you know, I just I feel like I represent a lot of things, and it's, I just want to say thank you to you guys, and especially focusing on Dina, because I am the youth, en youth engagement coordinator, so my job is to pretty much recruit youth and to inform them about the different community projects that we have around the city. Um, in tandem with that, I also work with um, Mass Higher Greater Brockton Workforce Board and, and their division, which is Youth Works. So uh, Youth Works is a career center that helps um, uh, youth between ages 14 and 24 find jobs, and um, we help with resume, cover letters, and uh, I think it's a great experience. We do have upcoming events, so please let's network and let's um, um, see how we can provide youth with more support and everything like that. And I also just want to say a little little plug for myself. I'm um, I'm a upcoming uh, I'm a freelance videographer. So my plan is to you know service uh, Brockton with uh, video content, whether it be uh, local restaurants, nonprofits, entrepreneurs. My plan is to use my skills and assets to provide for the greater Brockton community. So again, I just wanted to say thank you, everyone, for the people that inspired me, and I just want to continue to serve Brockton, and let's continue to fight for each other, and thank God you. bless. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for what you do. Um, again, in terms of the youth, um, you know, certain people uh, really expend time. Ollie Spears is here. Ollie, you know, he, he does so much for the youth. I mean, we can recognize so many different people that are doing so much. Um, one thing that I asked my team from my office to bring tonight, and I hope everybody got them, is Brockton City of Champion bumper stickers. And again, um, the champion are the people. If you didn't get one, we'll get you one. Um, but again, we can talk about the accolades of how it's called champion, but it's really the people. And, and we need to always recognize that and we need to welcome people to Brockton and learn from people in Brockton to better Brockton. Um, you know, and, and don't forget our veterans, don't forget our seniors. You know, we wouldn't be here without them. And realize that it's the next generation, the youth, that's really the future of our city. So we gotta come together as one. Last question, John. The last question from the youngest youth you have. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead, I want Go ahead, tell 
She's, she goes to the Barrett Russell School. And what do you want, Ivana? Chocolate flowers. <laughs> she wants to know if anybody's interested in helping purchase chocolate flowers to fundraise for the Barrett Russell School. <laughs> She's placing orders. <laughs> didn't want to leave just yet. Thank you so much. So, um, so again, I want to thank everybody. And yeah, let's buy the ch chocolate flowers, please. Um, thank you. I want to thank uh, the council president, superintendent of schools, Mark D'Agostino, vice chair of school committee, all elected officials here, all department heads. But more importantly, each and every one of you. We're going to do this again. We're going to do it every quarter. If you want to have a meeting with me, a discussion with me, don't hesitate. I'm at 45 School Street, your hall, City Hall. Thank you. God bless you all.